a meeting call to order after 7 o'clock, and it's being recorded on RCTV, and you can find that on Government Verizon 33, Comcast 22, and www.rctv.org. First item on the agenda is Order of Conditions 270-0686, Plan Change, 88 Glenmere Circle, Mr. Zhu, Mr. and Mrs. Zhu, we are not here this evening. Mm -hmm. Anything else we can do before 705, Chuck? Um, I just, I'll update you on that. So the plan change from 88 Glenmere is being rebid, and I don't know, um, yeah, I don't know when it'll come back to us. So I'd like you to make a uh, motion to continue it to a date uncertain. And motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We'll let the applicant who contacts me. We'll put them back on the agenda. Still. One minute. Want to do the Horsley Witten bill? Yes, please. I have a bill from uh, Horsley and Witten for a thousand fifty dollars for uh, work on the Howard Street project. Um, site inspection, review of <coughs> notice of intent, written analysis, uh, work session and uh, varying uh, attendance. It comes to 1,050. Uh, we have the money to pay this. And, uh, I move we pay that bill. Second. All those in favor? King 705. Yes, it is. So you have a request for determination of applicability. 2019-14400 Main Street, Map 17, Lot 26, Trano. Uh, would you like to come up and uh, talk about your project, please? Sure. And introduce yourselves. I'm Laura Shaw. I actually have prints. Can I give you all one? I said. Did we get prints previously? I'm sorry. No. no. I have prints for each of these so I'll we'll show you what we propose to do. Okay, fine. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Did you have something? I stole it from Dave. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's the first like page. This. Was... Thank you so much. Uh, the first page is roughly the existing outline of the property, because the outside perimeter being the fence. <clears throat> the second page is much the same, except it shows the existing asphalt, with the shaded area being the asphalt that's visible to the eye. Uh, we're hoping to remove the asphalt, regrade the property, and, and install decorative hardscapes in the backyard to make it usable. To show a small area here of stamp concrete? Yeah, basically. Is this going to carry throughout this hole? <clears throat> exactly. Okay. Uh, we'll stay a foot off the fence to allow for drainage and, and decorative gravel. Is there anything that has been this is what it looks like right now? Do something to uh, keep, the gravel, uh, keep the gravel that's underneath the fence from going on adjoining properties. Yeah, we'll put staff edging down until we retain it. You know, basically, currently it's, it's just a hodgepodge of, of asphalt, gravel, uh, board walkways. So I noticed underneath this, this, this fence, this summer, just so that I this, could walk on this mm -hmm. three-quarter-inch crust stone yeah. Yeah. that yeah. just basically so, goes um, up against a chain link fence. Can we do one? Yeah, we're the, we all do the rest Yeah, it just gets too confusing, okay? Thanks. I think what you were explaining was helpful, if you could explain that okay, to so, the, the group. Okay, so this is the existing backyard. Underneath the gravel and underneath um, the, pa the pavers right there, and the, those are just like fence planks I laid down just to get through the summer. But underneath all there is all asphalt. This is where it's exposed right here. 
but I, we're going to remove all the asphalt in there and just put decorative concrete on there with and keep the rocks around the board for drainage. So, did, did you guys do a site visit? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused on this. So, this one came, was it this property that came Where before us a few years ago? Or was it okay, this, or this was one of the other ones? It, it did. It, it's been before us a few times yeah. uh, for different projects. So, I've approved some minor projects over there. This is a very difficult site. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been turned over so many times and people have left the back go. And uh, Jennifer um, and Tom, Tom uh, have worked on it really hard. Yeah. It's, it looks a lot better, and you know it's a combination of commercial and you know living space. Yep. So it, they're trying to make something to to, to live with. Well, my recollection too from is this. What was the wetland over here? Is it, it's, it's a like stream. A, it's, it's an intermittent it's stream, stream that goes between the depot and like down by. Uh, it's it's like just on the other side of the train tracks. Uh, I'm pointing to the stream. Yeah. Yeah. The train. Yeah. The train it's like tracks it's nothing. Oh, right here. Oh, oh, I think I. Can <coughs> um, oh, totally. Yeah, oh, like right yeah. You right can see it on the wetland. on the board. It says Open Brook. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Walker's Brook? Uh, is it Walkersbrook over there? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. This is, this is right near Hatch. Walkersbrook is over by Perfecto. Is that, they've been calling that Walkersbrook. Right. Yes, that's right. This is way up by the railroad tracks or across this main street. Right. This is almost like across from McDonald's. Yes, right? it is across from McDonald's, yeah. yes. Um, okay. What's, what's going to be outside of, so you've got a, a good plan telling us what you want to do here. What is it going to be around this? Stamped concrete. Step, okay. Okay. So the stamped concrete is going to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to move the existing asphalt that's underneath here and replace it with stamped concrete. Stamped concrete. I don't have a problem with drainage now at all anyway, even mm -hmm. with the hard state there anyway. So yep. I figure if we throw gravel around those edges, that it'll pick up the rest of the drainage. Mm -hmm. So the whole, this whole area is going to be stamped concrete, or only this area and the rest is going to be pavers? No, no. the whole area, um, except for the garden and the raised bonsai garden. So just stamped concrete? Yeah. Okay. Um, That's all so there. being next to the stream, we're going to require that you have some sort of erosion control back there, just in okay. case something happens, because sure. we want wet cement in the stream. No, no, of course, oh, sure. of course. Um, is this existing vegetation being left yes. on its own? Exactly. Okay. So being there, I understand what you're what you're doing from that plan, and I and I agree that there was a lot of asphalt way back at I'm some point when someone there's a hole back there. Is. If you go before. underneath where I put the rocks, that's all asphalt. Yeah, I don't so know you do remember it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I didn't realize this until I went to go and put a fence, and I was like. Oh. Salt under here? Yeah. That was a surprise. So how much um, excavation is going to be, so the asphalt's going to be removed, and how much digging is going to be done on the site besides digging out the asphalt? Very minimal. It's almost that it finished okay, so, already. Okay, and how much fill is going to be added? Maybe, you know, maybe two or three tons of gravel to get it to everything to where we need to be as far as height-wise. So to even everything out, kind of. Mm -hmm. So gravel under, so... Gravel underneath the, con underneath the concrete as a hard as Okay. Okay. Um, and then the rest of this backyard is going to be just loam and seed? No, no. I'm very sorry. I, I got. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding. I, I assume this is grass. Seat. No, no. This is all no. concrete. Oh, this is all concrete. Right. What, what happened to that? This she is all asphalt picture. anyway. So this is it, right? That's so right. underneath it, this whole thing, what I did this last summer, just so I could use my bathroom. Right. So this right. is asphalt all underneath there. I just threw rock down and I threw the the wood down and built this so that I could walk in my backyard. Right. So he's gonna tear up 
the asphalt and just put stamp concrete. It's already hardscape underneath the gravel and the wood. It just needs to be. So when you take up the asphalt, where are you going to put the asphalt? Oh, we'll haul away the kind of like that. Okay. Um, when we were on the site visit, we did notice along this retaining wall that there was a lot of un, I don't know. Excess fill. Excess fill. And how did that get back there? Well, we had to dig the footings for the deck. That was just, just very temporary. So how long has it been there? Oh, Two weeks. we do the deck now, not even six, seven days. So when you do this work, we, that, that's on <coughs> unconsolidated. If we get a really heavy rain, that's going in that stream. Okay. So we would like some kind of you know, assurances that's going to we be We're planning on doing that anyway. I just haven't, it's November now, so I just didn't get to it, but that will be removed. But there's nothing to prevent it now. Mm -hmm. If we get a heavy rain, yeah, it'll no, go right I mean, into the stream. You guys can plan a site visit on Monday, and it will be gone by Monday. Chuck, any, guy, any ideas on that? Well, I think removing it is the best thing that can happen. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you guys are ready to start right away. That's what, what I heard. So yeah. at least yeah. you'll get, if you Let can't start, in. you're going to at least take the fill out of there. Sure. Um, I did have a question. Just, how do you, what's the, because I know you have to go like underneath the, the building to get access back there, correct? Right. Like, how do you, how do you, how are you going to access this to do the work? Oh, there's a oh gate. underneath the carport, there's a so gate. There's a carport here, yep. right? And you tell me there's a gate right here. Okay. You go under the carport here, and then you go down my back stairs, and then from the front to the back stairs, and then to the carport, there's a gate, like right there. That's where it starts. Is that enough? Do you need like Real equipment barrel. to get? Okay, all right, all right. It's just, <laughs> this is a lot of handwork. Okay, yeah, yeah. this is a lot Real of barrel, a little yeah, bit yeah. of labor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Answer. Answer. Like how are you going to get a bobcat back? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just wondering about the native vegetation on uh, the planting. So, I know bonsai is some. Um, not familiar if there's a native version, um, but I would like to know that this, maybe this garden or some in this bonsai garden you know, something beneficial and native to the area. Okay. I think we looked at those. Yeah, I, I did plant kind of five. I moved the trees that I should have and then I I planted. Um, I, how many bushes do we have out there? Uh, well, uh, well, there's four, four bushes the, and then flowers. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's so herbaceous material. But certainly, if you have recommendations, it would be very well. Yeah, I could, I could recommend a few plans to to go in there. Yeah, put it in, put it in the order uh, for what goes in. There's this area here also that you could Not touching drop it. some stuff in if you wanted to. If you wanted to keep what your plan was for here with the garden. And then drop in some native vegetation here. That would be fine. Okay. Fine with me. Is that neat vegetation? I mean, I don't know. The way the fence is um, made, you don't. The way the fence is up now, you, you yeah. didn't go back there. But it's isolated, and I think it has two fences. It has your fence and it has the parking lot fence. So if something went in there and it was established, it would be. So if I didn't want to go back out, I could just put it behind the fence. Zone. Well, in this area. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like that. Yeah, we could we could look at that when if you're going to be there on Monday, we could look at that. If if you're not around, I'll um, just email you and make yeah. some recommendations. Okay. All right, I'm satisfied with that. Any other questions from the commission? Any questions from the community? Hearing none. So request for determination. Yes, I, so I mean, yeah, I think it seems pretty straightforward to me. I, I generally like to have the documents ahead of time, but. Sorry I, mean, about that. We didn't no, know. I mean that's okay. I mean I, you explained it clearly, and I mean it's about as straightforward as practical. Yeah, I make a motion for negative determination. Second that. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda at seven ten. It's a lap to seven ten. Is a no seven ten. 270 0714 135 139 149 R 
Howard Street, map, 40, map 10, lot 75, 76, and 77, Infrastructure Holdings, LLC, update, and I believe um, <clears throat> we received some plans this afternoon at 4 p.m., and um, we usually uh, request six days before to, to get those plans so that we have ample time to review those, but um, I would probably like to open it up to the, the applicant to just do a brief update, if that would be sure. possible. Chuck, can you see the plan? Not, what would you like, Madam Chair? Do you want to see the plan as I speak? Just give no. high level overview? Yeah? No. And the board as well? That's easy. October was the last time we were here. I think the 23rd was the last meeting we were at. Um, and at that time, we had several site visits, quite an extensive review with Horsey Witten uh, to come up with. Near the end of that meeting, we walked away with a uh, wetland delineation that we um, took back to the design, um, the design board and, and reworked the site to, to work with the wetland. So what we're left with is the BBW up in this area and then an isolated, a locally jurisdictional isolated pocket here. Um, so you know, there's, there's minor tweaks kind of throughout the site to, to accommodate this new area, but the real kind of um, highlights or the, or the biggest changes to, to note, I guess, are really in lot four in particular. Um, the previous design had the detention basin or the infiltration basin located in the, in the parcel here, and the house was located in the front here. So as a result of this new isolated wetland, uh, essentially what we've done is, is flip those locations. So there's a, a infiltration basin in the front of lot four here, and the house has been relocated to the, to the um, rear of that parcel. Um, the other changes, um, all the houses are now equipped with dry wells for infiltration purposes. That was something that Percy Whitten had stressed in their report and we have implemented here. So, all the roof runoff is captured, infiltrated into the ground, and no longer makes its way into any of the stormwater facilities. Uh, there was previously, we had a, a break in the curve at the end of the cul-de-sac, a swale that led its, made its way to the infiltration basin. The town engineer indicated that if this were to be an accepted road, which is the intent, uh, that wasn't the preferred design, so we switched that to drop a catch basin over in this area here, and now it's hard piped into that basin. Um, in general, that the location from a stormwater perspective actually fits better with the site and the existing drainage patterns. There's really kind of watersheds that head this way and over and then this way into the wetland and that basin kind of splits, sits right in there and, and catches water from the same areas that go to the basin now and, and more directly um, uh, types that water into the, into the wetland. Peak flows have been analyzed, volumes have been analyzed, we're reducing them at three different design points. We looked at what was going to Howard Street, what was going off site to the east, and what was going to that uh, bordering wetland in the north part of the site. Um, I'm trying to think, we also, so for the road, down, this is minor and outside the buffer, but we have a couple infiltration areas here, which will catch a small portion of road runoff, and then uh, in the area of 149 Howard, lots one and two, um, we've, we've carved out a bit of a basin here that is, uh, has swales that direct water to it. Uh, 149 Howard actually pitches this way onto the site. So it's catching the water from that area. It's also catching any runoff that may come from the backs of these houses in here. And then it's hard piped uh, through a culvert to the uh, wetland in the back. And so that, that uh, function or that setup uh, more or less mimics the channel that's there. Um, there today, so it's the same same notion that water goes that way. Yep. Could you just walk through that one more time? The, sure. That, that piece of it. Yeah. So so just to back up to the existing, there's a the, the wetland in the back, and then there's a channel that extends to more or less in here. Um, and through working with Horsley Witten, it was determined that the channel isn't the stream isn't jurisdictional, and then there was a, a piece of questionable area that may have been a wetland that was also determined not to be a wetland. So none of those features are jurisdictional. 
we're disturbing them, but we have made attempts to maintain the drainage pattern. So currently water kind of comes this way into the wetland or this way and off, off site. And so what we've done is if with these two houses, any water that comes from the rear of these houses towards, uh, towards the back will catch in a swale and go into this basin, in a swale and go into this basin, and then uh, into a uh, pipe that will travel in more or less the same location as that channel is today to maintain that drainage pattern of water moving this way into the boring uh, vegetated wetland to the back. Is that a little clearer? A little, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more sense? Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else. We've got Excuse that. Andy, I think I'm you sorry. wanted to reach a conclusion. You were describing that you did the calculations about what happens to stormwater mm -hmm. on the site right. and how it related to off-site. Yep. Did you want to share your conclusion of those calculations? Yeah. Yep, yep, certainly. Um, just so the idea now is we've got the majority of the road going to this <coughs> basin. Um, and this basin directly discharges to that wetland. So part of what we analyzed was how much water goes to that wetland system today and how much water, storm water, would make it there uh, if this development were to be built as it's currently shown. And what our calculations, which meet local standards as well as the states, is that there's, uh, there's no increase in either peak flows, so the maximum amount of runoff that goes there, or volumes to that wetland. We did that same analysis to what's coming off-site. Uh, there's a portion of the site that goes this way today. So we've looked at that both the conditions today as well as the conditions uh, after the development and came to the same conclusion that there's less peak flow um, and there's also less volume, uh, equal or less volume going there today and then the same analysis to Howard Street which is you know clearly out of the buffer zones that go with those wetlands but it was a third spot that we that we looked at. Um, of the lot four, I guess the only piece of lot four is this driveway uh, there's an infiltration trench along that driveway that will catch the runoff from that driveway before it gets to the well. So this is coming this way. Really the only area that makes its way off site here is limited to kind of the rear of this house. So the house is infiltrated. We have a small area that goes off site which is much smaller than it is today. Um, and then the rest of it is managed in that pond and headed, headed, to, the, uh, headed to the wetland system today. I think that's, I mean, I can get into more detail. I know we're trying to keep it brief. This hasn't been reviewed. We're certainly, uh, we came in here re requesting continuance. So the idea was just to kind of uh, show you some of what we've done. We've, we've taken some steps. We're in compliance with local regs. This is really a buffer zone project is what we're talking about. So uh, we're not disturbing in the 25-foot zone of natural vegetation. Uh, there's no buildings within 35-foot, uh, no, no uh, structure zone. And the rest of the standards we also meet as well. Um, I have a question. Um, I do want to make it brief, and I, I want to make any questions from the community brief too. Yeah, so, but I know that when we talked last time, when Horsley and Witten were here, may have I may have missed it when you were talking. But was there any kind of like rain gardens or um, specific uh, mitigation of runoff to each particular? Um, uh, residents. Yeah, so it's not rain gardens, but we are capturing all the roof runoff and, and uh, putting it into the ground. It's, it's really more of a drywall system. Some of those plastic chambers is what we have now, but uh, you know, same idea. We're catching the roof runoff, putting it in the ground. So if you look, I don't know how much you can remember, it's been a while since we had that last design up on the, on the board here, but that pond was much bigger. Oh, yeah. Part of that was, was because we were sending all the roof runoff to that pond. So the run the rate of the amount of runoff going to the pond was much greater before and now we're putting the roofs into the ground so um, they're not making their way to that pond which which certainly helps. And so does that uh, improve the total suspended runoff? So yeah so we, we get we meet our TSS by using the catch basin as well as infiltration basin. So I think we're at 83, 84 percent something like that of TSS that is is now the roof runoff's clean, so we're just sending it straight into the ground without um, pre-treatment. But yeah. Um, can you explain a little bit more the the new layout of the lot. So you've got a driveway there. Where's the thirty? Can you show me where the thirty-five foot line is? Sure. For reference, it's you know the thirty-five foot. I believe is. 
array on the screen. It is mm -hmm. So it pass, it, it's somewhere in here. Do I have a dimension there? I can't read it. like the red marker. Mm -hmm. So the, this corner, which is the closest corner, is about uh, a little over 44 feet away. Just a, I can't, it's a little grainy on the screen, so I can't get you the line, but so we're about 44 feet away. So is the plan, because I, I, I think what I see is contours for a slope, it, it's just a like four foot slope to the maybe 35 foot line, or what, what exactly is going on with the driveway along that? That area is the that driveway wall, here. retaining wall. Is that a, a, a just slopes or? So there's a small retaining wall yeah. right now on the where this little bump out is the turnaround. There's a small retaining wall there, but we're we're just grading down um, after that, and it's a little higher here because we want to get that drywall on the ground. And I was thinking separation. I was thinking actually the wetland side. This side is that is that grading up too? So that that's that's you know we're more or less kind of at grade-ish there, so there's not a lot of grade change. Here it slopes down some, um, but we're okay. out of that out of that 25 foot zone for sure. Looks like it, it's, it looks like there's a lot of grading and it's all built up. Are those one foot? These contours? are one footers, yeah, so it looks a little, maybe a little more aggressive than, than it actually is. But, you know, this, so this is, you know, one, two, three, so that's three feet, three contours is three feet right there. Mm -hmm. When you uh, laid out the houses, did you uh, take into consideration human traffic around the wetland side? Because it looks like the tree row is right there, and a lot of people come back to us and they say, well, we don't have any room to get around the left-hand side of our house because it's so close to trees that weren't cut. Right. Um, so I didn't know if that one in the back and this one over here lot three um, um, this one here yeah, yeah. It yeah. seems like corn is pretty tight it's, it's on a on some grade over there uh, that's pretty tight yeah so well that. as far as the house that house is about 40 feet this is about 40 feet from the wetland mm -hmm. yeah so this all be for later but I would ask if that house has to be as big as the others and you could pull it back somehow so in general these houses are representative you know these are rectangles that we're showing we're working with the applicant on maybe something that's more um, exact to what would be built an actual footprint with dogs and things like that mm -hmm. um, so we can continue to discuss the, these houses if, if that's something Th that those two yeah that would be yeah. great just on that one side and while you're in that dialogue i'm sorry to slow you down but help in the redesign how do you do things here i've usually heard of um, usually they use a box for the house, and as long as what somebody does is within that box when they build their own, they only come back if they're doing something in an, uh, in beyond a no-disturb zone. In other words, as each house comes to be built, if they come back to you for something outside the box for an order of conditions, how do you do it? So we don't usually do that building envelope. Um, most most plans are pretty defined. Veterans Way would be one that ended up coming back, but they came back with separate notices of intent when they had their plans. Yeah, decks and things like that? Excuse me? Each. If somebody built a deck for Each house. So, so the example that he's giving, each house came back with a separate notice of intent. When because we approved those boxes, and then they had to come back and do notices of intent when they had a house design that included the deck. So we do want to see something that's designed, not just a box. Understood. Yeah, a, a great example of that, you know, we've got a project right now where the, the layout was important. You know, what, what ended up out there was not what the commission was looking for. And I think that's something that I want to make sure that we don't see again. So I, I think the layout is important. Perhaps you don't have time for this today. Uh, that's a question that's a, a hard one because with six houses, people have different styles of what they like. Um, and these are all buffer zone. And they're all outside your no build zone. So, so there's, uh, there's, there is a route with, with the Veterans Way where it was separate notice of intents for each house. Yeah, if they had to. Okay, I think maybe like I understand what you want, or I think my client does too. Um, and let's go back and talk about. It. Uh, yeah, I would say that's how it's been. Even um, going off Forest Street, they came in with separate notices of intent. 
when they had their house design. Well, respectfully, it won't change the stormwater. Is it okay if Andy speaks with um, your Horsley Witten folks to um, see if they have anything to add that he needed to work on? They haven't received any of the information, uh, so I'll, I'll be sending that to them tomorrow, and then, yeah. That's okay? We pretty much want to make sure that they don't have something to say about the design of the stormwater before we come back again. Sure. Any? Yeah, doesn't, is that going to be in addition to what engineering looks at? How, how do you think that's going to happen? Well, there's, so left with Horsley Witten, we do have another um, public meeting and a review with the engineering department. Right. So <clears throat> I would only want to make sure that we're still, we still can have those two things if they're taking time to talk to Andy. Um, that would be my only request. So <clears throat> why don't you allow me to give them a call in the morning and make sure that we're not going to, you know, need, I, I understand how this would speed up everything. And I think that's great. But we still want those two meetings. And, um, oh, definitely. Yeah. I meant more for your sake. No point in having him not talk to the engineers about whatever their thoughts are until he hears about it here at a meeting in front of you. They ought to just tell him if they've got a problem and he'll fix it. So I'll get so a hold of you uh, yeah, sometime tomorrow. Sure. Thank you. So, so just to clarify for me, what, what is going to be the past? We've got a meeting in December that I'm sure the, this applicant would like to be on and discuss this further, is the goal to have Horsley Winton review this, engineer, have a meeting with Horsley Winton Engineering and the applicant separately, and then have Horsley Winton come to the next meeting in December? That, that's, well, that's the plan, yep. but the dates may not work out. When that, when that all happens. I, I guess that's where I would just want to make sure everybody's on the, the, the same but page to, to try to. So this is our only November meeting. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of, there's, there's enough only time. December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So outside of vacations and whatnot. We're, we're a month away. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just, Thanksgiving's in there, so the weeks go by quick. I just want to make sure that, that's how we, I understand the path. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. That, that the goal is, Horsley went and reviews this, you, Horsley went and engineering and the applicant have a have a meeting. Right. So I can. So me, Horsley Witt and the applicant, uh, engineering have that meeting. Yeah. Uh, the chair, yeah, vice yeah, chair yeah, who, can come. Yeah. They want, uh, and then we're just reviewing. But I could also see that meeting being eliminated too. Okay. Because if the client talks to Horsley Witt and they agree, Ryan reviews that. Ryan's our town engineer reviews that and he's okay with it, yep. our third party review is okay with it, then we don't need that meeting. Okay. We just need, we, need, we usually get a memo from some, engineering some sort of, that yeah. says they're fine with the project. We have third party review, they might need some questions ahead of time, but as long as those questions get answered, it's, it, that might be an optional meeting. I mean, okay. I, th and that's what I think is a good idea, is, is if Forsley Wynn looks at this and says, hey, look, they, they took our they heard what we said last time. They they took that to heart, and we don't have really much to say here. Then, yeah. So now it's a useless it's meeting there. Janet Bernardo will be dealing with mostly. She's the engineer. She she'll be able to turn this around pretty quickly. So I don't know okay. if there could be a problem. We also have uh, the next community uh, development meeting is until the beginning of December as well. I think it's the sixth, maybe the ninth, something like that. So they haven't reviewed this layout either. So that that's going to them. And, and so, you know, <laughs> I, this, I realize this is a, a chicken or the egg type thing, but yeah. is there a possibility that that changes what's something significantly what's presented here? Is this done? Uh, I hope not. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I mean the, the comments that came out last time. Um, you know, this is this is from their perspective a by right subdivision. We're not seeking significant relief from any of the subdivision okay. standards, things like that. But there's still that layer of review. You know, the fire department. I believe that the town engineer issued a letter to them last time, so we had some initial comment. You know, so there's still some pieces that need to come together outside of this room. I guess yeah, is all I'm saying. Similar to us, when we see very, you know, when when people come in with variances, right. Right. that there's an extra layer of sure. review yeah. and scrutiny. Yeah. That that always has 
changes in comments associated with it. So, okay. At lot three um, that we were just talking about, so you have the swale between one and two. Mm -hmm. Lot three is built up a little bit. Is Are you sure the water's coming from the front half from Howard Street? And I'm just wondering if it would be trapped where it actually says lot two and hugs the house and then spills into the wetland. I thought that was the high area. Talking about this movement? No, going there, going I'm so sorry, yeah. going down. That's going down. Yep. On the on the side of the house. This side of the house. Yeah. So that, What's where's the water coming from from that area? So these are higher coming down, and then we have a swell around this around that house as well. So this is going this way, and this is going this way. And it goes back into the street at where that tree is. Here. Yeah. This is coming down. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to go into the street. Yeah. This yeah. is going into the street. Correct. Yeah. So. The only other thing is, did, with the trees that are going to be removed, did you look at our tree replacement policy? Yes. There's okay. going to be just, just we'll get that to the next meeting. I just yeah, want to yeah, make sure yeah. that we have in the past, but it's come out through department discussions that we will no longer accept street trees as part of our replacements. We have no control over those. Okay. So there's a tree, as part of this new set, there's a tree removal plan. So we've highlighted what trees we yeah. anticipate to be cut. We noted a total replacement, which included just every tree we're showing. We've got some trees up on this um, uh, property line as well, but it includes all the street trees, so we can keep discussing that. But that yeah. plan is in there, so you can kind of wrap your head around Do you need the street trees, or did you go beyond what you needed for replacements? So it's like a bathtub. That mm -hmm. policy, to me, leaves a lot of leeway to a lot of people about what we will need. I think so. We're having a discussion with engineering and the tree board, and I think about what we need for street trees and what we need. No, but what I'm asking you is so we're not going to accept the street trees yeah, for our replacement. Right. Did you have enough to, uh, with what you're planning, to overcome what's been cut? So it's basically a one to one replacement right. or two shrubs to one tree. So this is, this is pretty much what we're asking for. So the total trees we're proposing offsets the trees we're cutting, but what you're telling me now don't have enough you talking about so it need to be in the buffer zone is that what your policy would be? our policy asks okay. for it in the buffer zone and now we're eliminating street trees all those street it. trees going yeah. around uh, so we clearly do not have enough trees to offset what we're taking down okay okay shown if you in the buffer zone. Include, if you don't include the street trees right so okay we, we'll need to keep yeah no up. that and that just that just came up for the discussion with um, the DPW department and the town tree warden so do you allow them to be planted in the no disturb zone you can you can revegetate anywhere where it will grow. We, I don't think we have a problem with that. Um, it, so it, it needs to be in an area that makes sense to really. Well, yeah. If it's if it's an area that already has vegetation it's established, it, it we don't needs to be we don't right need species things that are watered properly. They've got the right growing cycle for that area. Gotcha. And plant at the right time. And they need to uh, assure survivability for Over three years. years. So that's, and did I miss anything? No. Something I just wanted to comment on was um, when it comes to the um, design storms for stormwater, um, do you take into account the Northeast climate data? So. The Cornell. So we did not do Cornell. We did. What, what was your highest design storm, do you recall? But what was the amount? Well, how many inches? And I've had I've gone back and forth with the, with engineering about this. They love it when I bring it up because I want to see us getting a little bit more realistic in our design storms. And engineering says it sounds like over design, but so I want to we keep asking. Six and a half inches is what we used. Yeah, I think the northeast climate hundred year storm is closer to seven and a half or eight inch. Yeah. It is. And and I think and I, I really want engineering to consider what the data, the valid climate data, is telling us for our extreme storm events. I mean, That's my can, technical comment. We can certainly look at that. I mean, if we're, we'd obviously be increasing both the, what the existing produces and the proposed, so yeah. Yeah, especially in this situation where you're doing a tremendous amount of regrading, where um, a number of trees are getting taken down, you know, you're changing the drainage significantly. You know, and we've got a lot of really concerned citizens who get impacted. 
So I, I think that needs to be looked at really hard and as conservatively as you can design to maintain the habitat and, and protect from flooding, I think, I think that's where we need to be. So, so today we, we do comply with what the standards require. I mean, we can continue to discuss and look at it from this, you know, we've met statutory obligation is met with this design for I know what you're saying that maybe there's some data out there we can look at but just you know, yeah and, and I've even looked into TR 55 and and what <clears throat> excuse me and what they require for design storms and you know and they say you have to use the best data possible you know and I've had discussions with people where they say I can use I can use the stuff that goes up to 1965 and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I think you're missing a couple decades there that are a little pertinent to to include into the averages. So I just want to push that forward. Okay. okay. And, uh, our meeting is on the December 11th, 11th, and it looks like you're going to the sixth with the uh, CBDC. I think that's the next one. Yeah. So if you can get us any changes as soon as possible, yeah. that would be great. Yep. Was it wouldn't too? So, so yeah, as soon as I hear from you regarding Horsley Witten, yeah. I can open a dialogue. <coughs> with you know, it's obviously going to take them a little time to digest, but we'll, we'll certainly push it forward as fast as we can. Yeah. This is what's going to go to the Community Planning uh, mm -hmm. Commission. So this set will be what they review first as well. Sure. So, as this, so we, we got this today. Um, right, so we got the, the copies. Does this essentially not get to the commission until the next packet? Do we have no, to you'll copies? leave with paper copies tonight. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll have, everyone should grab one right there on the chair. So. Thank you. Thank you. reading for you. <laughs> and it's it's comes from water the commission. Reports in there too. Fun stuff. Diane, um, I want to limit our comments from the community because this is just an overview tonight, um, and we haven't had a, an opportunity to, opportunity to digest this and review it. Um, so, but if there's anything new that I haven't heard from folks, uh, our neighbors, um, I welcome, welcome your comments. Chuck? Yeah, I'd just like to request a copy of the plans. I don't know if I can take one tonight or not. But I, I was also wondering, I don't no. no. I think the, the best thing my recommendation was to, is communication through Chuck. Yeah, if, if you could do that. Uh, if you have any comments or, or questions, Chuck, and you're I, Chuck I think, Castelluccio, right? Okay. I think uh, I think I'd, from the community standpoint, I'd rather see official communication to the, the commission. I think that. that's a good. Yeah, that's and, a good. Um, yeah. And have that if you know if, they, if there's comments similar to you know you presented comments previously. We don't want to get any you know mixed messages. We, we no. can we can send those comments yep. to the horse meeting window. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. okay. Do we have a motion? Can we make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Could we save you the trouble of letting Andy give Chuck to give to Chuck the extra set of plans? Do you have one? Do you have an extra set? We do. Do you have an extra set? I have an extra small set. Sure, that's, that's what that'll work for you. Um, she may be looking for the stormwater for it too, though. Thank you. She may be looking for the stormwater report too. I don't have that one. Okay. Can you grab that? Okay. <laughs> Copy the script. Copy the script? Yeah. I've got it. <laughs> Sorry. No.
He got past that point, but she didn't have herself. He got past the point that I had. Next item on the agenda, it's Notice of Intent 270-0675, 364 Lowell Street, Map 26, Lot 157, Jameson Properties, LLC. Uh, the next one is Notice of Intent uh, 270. So uh, do we have an update on that? Yeah, the, so anything on that list, you, you Okay. So, are they, are they not coming in tonight? Do you get them them? They, um, so they sent me. They sent me an email that um, they they got a different they got a different message from. They actually we have two building commissioners, and they they talked to one and not the other, and I talked to the other one. They got two different answers to this emergency access. Uh, so they're going to sort that out, what, what the deal is. So were they not coming in this evening? They're not coming in, but everything we asked for, the as-built plan, um, move, move the access somewhere else, show us. You know, they basically said we can't. One paragraph, building commissioner said that I'm required to put this in in this location, which is the other one. And another one said that that's not what the code says. That's not up to us to argue. What's that? That's not up to us to argue. Well, that's that's so. It's part of their part of their. In order to have though. somebody do something, right? They have to have that possibility. Right. Yeah. So they have that possibility of using an emergency access. Right. That's how I see it. Right. So it's not off the table. Right. Okay. But this bill manual will be here at our next meeting. You will receive some material. You won't receive an as built plan. I've requested it a couple of times. If it's something that you want to understand where that new structure was put, it sounds like you need to ask them yourselves because I, I already sent two emails. So we have that structure. And did it move to the left and down? And then we have... So they don't plan... So they, they're coming in to ask us for permission to do additional work, and they won't give us the, an as-built of what they've actually built so far? I didn't receive one. I, and then, so it sounded like at, at the end of this email, which I could put up if you want to read it... Um, I, don't, I don't remember what... I didn't send it to anyone. Okay. Um, it does say, I'll see you at tonight's meeting. So I assume they were coming in with just this one paragraph of information, but then I, I asked them, I said, hey, this is all the stuff we asked for, and I'm getting different information from the building inspector that's here today, and saying that that's in the code, that you can do an emergency access, and, and you know, you guys need to figure that out, because that's what the commission asked for. And then I got back that they're going to, they want to continue until our next meeting. Oh. Make a motion to continue NOI 270-0675. December 11th, I'm sorry. Huh? I'll second. December 11th. December 11th. All those in favor? Okay. Notice of intent 270. We don't have a number, DEP number, 259 and 267 Main Street, map 12. Lot 39 and 40, Stonegate Construction. And oh, they're just standing up. Did you get the file number? Uh, we didn't get a file number. Okay, so okay, the public did. hearing uh, uh, is now opened and being conducted currently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Redmond General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearings conducted in the following manner. Applicant will present the proposal. Commission receives reports. Uh, the Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed the, to the Chair. And when you do, please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. Uh, there's an attendance sheet at the back of the room. And um, at this time, I'd like to introduce members of the Commission starting on my right. Bob 
David Panette. Anita Scanlon. Rebecca Longley, Chair. <coughs> Carl Sicconi. Michael Flynn, Vice Chair. Chuck Tironi, Conservation Administrator. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. For the record, Joe Fesnola from Hancock Associates representing Stonegate Construction. With me tonight is Dave Cowell. Also with me tonight uh, is Josh Latham, the attorney for the project, Jay Finnegan, the developer, and Alex Cates, uh, also from the developer's team. Uh, we are here to talk about a proposed um, multifamily condominium project uh, located on, on two parcels. The two parcels are on um, the triangular parcel, which is 267, that was formerly a house on, but that had been torn down a while ago. Um, and 264 or 265, which is the um, has an existing house and was the site of uh, oil company. Uh, the property it itself does go all the way back to uh, to the streams. There's riverfront wetlands. Uh, the site has uh, been it was the subject of a of a ANRAD application and ORAD, so that that's been. Um, looked at from that standpoint and have been the alliance approved by, by this commission. We also talked uh, informally to the commission about, about the project um, just in trying to work through and, and make sure the project was, uh, was moving forward in, the, in what we felt was the best light. The site is somewhat degraded uh, over the years, kind of mistreated uh, by the, by the uh, former oil company people with, uh, with regards to the um, some activities, storage of vehicles, and so forth. Uh, so we think that there's a great opportunity to make some some improvements on the site uh, from the standpoint of restoration of a, a lot of this riverfront and, and buffer zone. Uh, so with regard to the project itself, it would be it would include removal of the existing uh, the existing uh, home um, and construction of a 24 unit building that would have uh, parking under and three stories above. Uh, it is zoned in A40, so it's zoned for multifamily. Um, uh, the parking underneath would have 35 vehicles. There'd be an additional 13 vehicles in a, in a back parking lot. Um, it's kind of located on a peninsula, uh, high area uh, within the existing topography. Uh, access would be through a a new curb cut um, to, to the north of the parcel that would access both the the underground parking and that that back lawn. As far as um, it, it, the impacts the project would have, uh, there is a, an impact to to a, a finger wetland or, or a finger portion of the wetland um, in this area. Uh, what we would, are proposing to do is to install a retaining wall uh, in that location to minimize the, the impact needed, leaving a, uh, about a 10-foot strip around the building there. Uh, there'd be a temporary impact to, for the wall construction. We've called that out as 10 feet wide right now, but um, our experience in putting um, gravity block walls in is we don't need that much once we get that first course done and we start to bring the wall up uh, with the fill we can loam and seed the area on the back side of the wall and not go down there again um, every, everything can be done uh, from the development side of the wall there um, with regards to the, the balance of, of the work grading wise um, we do have an extensive retaining wall around the proposed uh, parking lot because we do have to elevate that um, just to make the, the grades work. And we're trying to stay stay out of the do not uh, disturb <coughs> zone uh, with the installation of the retaining wall. Similarly, we, we put that first course of block up, start the filling process, um, bring that up. We can immediately start to um, stabilize and restore the area uh, down gradient of there. And, uh, work our way 
work our way out. And, uh, other than the restoration effort that Mr. Kyle will go over, um, we really don't need to be uh, down on that low side of the wall. Uh, just to talk about the grades a little bit, uh, we did have a geotech, geotechnical company go out and do um, borings and, and test pits. So we understand where the water table is. Water table is around elevation 88 or 89. So we're trying to keep the, the garage level up above that um, and building the site around that. So in the back of the building, um, the access will be to the first floor, which again necessitates elevation of, of the parking lot um, uh, and the and, uh, installation of the retaining wall. Uh, we're on municipal sewer and water, obviously on Main Street. Those connections will be made um, in the street and pulled into the building. As far as stormwater management, uh, we have kind of two systems here. Uh, there's a system, uh, underground infiltration system, proposed in the back. Uh, those are proposed to be Storm Deck 740 chambers, plastic chambers, uh, treatment. Uh, collection, first of all, will be catch basins, deep sump hooded catch basins. They'll go into um, an isolator row, which is a StormTech um, uh, proprietary BMP. It's a filtration system uh, where the one of the rows of the, of the chambers is laid down first with filter fabric, and the first flush or the, the low flow will go through the the lower half of the manifold and go into that chamber and higher flows will go in the higher outputs of the manifold into the other chambers. So we're getting our, we're actually getting 84% treatment from the isolator row in addition to the deep sump put of catch basins. The second part of the, um, the drainage system will take care, oh, sorry. This drainage system will take care of the back half of the, the parking lot and all of the roof. Uh, there'll be a, a perimeter roof drain system that goes around uh, the building that will tie into that infiltration system, uh, providing the, the recharge uh, that, that we're required to do. The second system takes care of the access drive um, uh, that goes into the garage. Uh, that'll be done with a trench drain <coughs> at the entry and a trench drain at the garage door. It'll also take a small portion of, uh, of the access drive aisle uh, from the high point down. That'll be um, collected in a deep sump put a catch basin. That will also go through a, a treatment in an isolator row, uh, but that's just uh, for, for treatment. That's not, not for recharge like the, the back system. The output from that isolator row that's located here will go into a shallow detention basin. That detention basin will have an outlet uh, through a, a, a gap in the berm uh, back at this location, an outlet to the, uh, to the buffer zone. The, the, a portion of the outfall from this system will go into this detention basin, and a portion will be diverted to a, an outfall directly in the, uh, in the wall. And that's just trying to get the, the post-development flows to somewhat mimic the pre-development flows um, by spreading out the discharge points in two locations and not overloading one discharge point. Um, so it's balancing the two. So that's, that's the, um, a brief overview of the stormwater. We presented a full stormwater report documenting compliance with Mass DEP uh, standards. The, as far as the restoration, and we have kind of two pieces to this. We've got replication of the impacted wetlands, and we've got the restoration, which, which is something that we talked to the commission in, informally and, and now followed up on it to detail that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Dave Cowell from our office, our wetlands, senior wetland scientist, to kind of go over the three areas that we're proposing to do uh, those uh, those pieces. Thank you, Joe.
Okay, as, uh, as Joe had mentioned, my name is David Cowell. I'm a, a wetland scientist and restoration ecologist with the Indian Associates. Uh, I think Joe did a, a great job of just giving a, a, a quick overview. Um, I'll just spend one minute um, uh, just going over what resource areas we have um, in our proposed impact areas, and then I really want to um, focus on uh, our impact uh, analysis and uh, our, our mitigation measures that, that we're proposing here. Um, so as Joe mentioned, we, we, we and this, this is, uh, the Commission already is aware that we have an ORAD on this, but for the sake of uh, the public presentation. The wetland resource areas, we field delineated them and had them bound by, um, through ANRAD. Uh, there is a stream at the back that's a perennial stream, thus it uh, broadcasts the 200-foot riverfront area, which is this line that's detailed up here. Um, the dark green area is, uh, is wetland, so this is boarding vegetated wetland uh, where the dark green line is uh, coming around. Um, and that's it, there's no floodplain on site, there's a map zone X which is 500 year which is non-regulated. So those are our resource areas and um, of course under local bylaw there's a 35 foot no disturb zone uh, broadcast off of the, the wetland resource area. Um, as Joe had proposed, uh, you know, he, he gave an overview of, of the project that we have involved um, in efforts to avoid, minimize, and mitigate for um, our impacts. Um, by avoidance, uh, first and foremost, uh, Joe had pointed out that there's, there, there's a zoning line here that is, uh, is it's business district and residential. Multifamily and single family. Multifamily and single family. So um, that also helps, it, it, it limits our area to, to put the building. It pushes us closer to Main Street, and subsequently it's also uh, beneficial that it pushes us away from the wetland resource areas. But that's one site constraint that we've, we've dealt with in terms <coughs> of um, um, working within those parameters. Uh, in efforts to minimize impact uh, by putting uh, 35 parking lots below the building itself, we've uh, uh, tried to minimize square footage of impervious surface area um, by, by having parking below the building. Um, in efforts to, to mitigate, that's what, what I'd like to delve into. Um, by necessity, the way that the wetland is configured, there's, there's a jog out of wetland that, that projects uh, towards Main Street. And it's this, this finger-like projection of wetland that um, is, is really a constraint that we can't shift uh, due to the, the adjacent property. So in order to maintain a, an economically feasible project, we're proposing to, to fill a portion of this wetland. By necessity, to fill this wetland, we also need to have um, some, <coughs> the 35 foot no disturb zone is out here, for which we've um, submitted a formal waiver request uh, by the town bylaws. And we're hoping that we can offer enough uh, offsetting mitigation that, that can justify that. What we're proposing in mitigation for these impacts here, um, for the fill of square footage of, of boarding vegetated wetland, we propose the wetland replication area. And they exist. Yes, please. I'm sorry to interrupt here. You got a good flow going, but oh, yeah. can you just can you just tell me um, numbers? Like, what's the area of yes. volume? What's the volume of wetland you're taking, and what's the volume of wetland you're rep replicating? Great. Okay. In the application, I, I I tried to. It's a 13 page narrative, but I tried to summarize this in a, a an impact table. So um, our impact in wetlands is. We're proposing a, a permanent fill of 2,750 square feet of wetland in this area here. Um, in order to do the construction and, and uh, install the retaining walls, there's a secondary temporary impact of 2,090 uh, square feet, which we're proposing to restore following construction. We have a restoration plan for that area. So the permanent impact in wetlands is 2,750 square feet. We've proposed one-to-one, -one, uh, the, the, uh, the minimal standard, one-to-one one -one wetland replication. There's a peninsula up here. Yes. What's that? I'm sorry, That's isn't our standard two-to-one? Is your town standard two-to-one? Yes. Because we can't, yeah, under the state, we, we, oh, sorry, I didn't characterize that. There were not, um, we really have the inability to meet the two-to-one criteria. We're able to at least um, um, uh, mitigate one-to-one -one issue here. Why are you unable to meet the two-to-one? Well, I mean, there's constraints here in the 35-foot the, the buffer zone where we're proposing um, restoration. This is, 
an existing addition where, where the buffer zone or where the 35 foot no disturb zone sort of coincides. The wetland is located at um, the, the toe slope beneath uh, uh, a disturbed area. Um, and it's, it's a bit prohibitive to, to make the cuts to come back on that to provide uh, additional um. replication area. Something, I mean, prohibitive? possibly we can, we can look and see if we can boost the number. But, uh, I mean, you have a large drainage structure in, in the... Um, this here? Yeah, you have yep. large, and you have room for wetlands over there. By, by, by replicating this area and pushing this back? Yeah, I guess. Can you tell me what, which page you, you justify the not meeting the two to one? Is, is there a write-up in here? There was. There was a, a waiver sorry. request, which is, I don't have page numbers, unfortunately. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah. But there's a wetland impact and mitigation uh, analysis summary, followed by request for waiver under Reading Wetland Bylaw. It's, it's only a few pages in. Go ahead, Mike. It's only sorry. a few pages in. Okay. So that's, that's something that we can certainly look into. We, we presume that this wasn't going to be a, a one and done hearing, that this would be an opening hearing to introduce the project to the commission, followed by uh, questions and comments received, in which case we would uh, provide additional supporting information. So these the comments received tonight will be um, taken to heart, and uh, we, can, we can make a revision for you. So. Right, so that is something that we can, we can evaluate uh, prior to, to the next hearing. Um, so that is, uh, so that's wetland impacts. Um, the secondarily for the <coughs> impact of 35 foot buffer zone, what we're proposing to do, we do have numbers here as well. So permanent impact within a 35 foot no disturb zone is, is this area here. This is the 35 foot no disturb zone here. We're proposing uh, 3,022 square feet of permanent impacts there would be um, 7,800, oh, I'm sorry, I have this, that wrong. It's 7,800 square feet of permanent impact and um, 3,022 temporary impact to be restored. As uh, mitigation for that, what we're offering to provide this entire hatched area here is uh, a 35 foot buffer zone that we're offering to restore. That totals uh, 18,560 square feet. So that's nearly two, two and a half times the, the size of our impact area. In this area, as, as Joe mentioned, the, the, the site is heavily degraded. Um, the two largest problematic, uh, we have invasive species, the two most problematic species are Norway maple and Asiatic bittersweet, which are prevalent throughout the entire site. Um, Norway maple in particular is, is a pretty difficult species in the sense that it's an allelopathic species. That's a, 10 point word. So the allelopathy means that Norway maples that are in here produce a um, chemical compound that sort of prevents the growth of other species. It's a, they've evolved this, this uh, strategy. As such, there's a lot of Norway maples in here, but there's very little understory or, or species diversity. It's almost monocultural in there. So what we're proposing to do is remove Norway maple and we've uh, uh, prepared a planting plant of native species that we would plant uh, in, in replacement of Norway maples taken throughout that area. And then the, the third mitigation strategy we have, um, we talk, uh, I didn't talk about our, our riverfront area analysis, the riverfront area on site. The basin is proposed, this is the 200 foot riverfront line um, although our, our basin is proposed in there, that is not uh, credited towards the calculation of, of impacts. And there's a criteria for that um, in, the, in the wetland regulations that state that the calculation of square footage of alteration um, 
shall exclude areas used for structural stormwater management measures provided there's no practical alternative to siting the structures within the riverfront area outside. In this circumstance, this is driven by site topography and, and, and other site constraints that it, it naturally drains this direction and by necessity that's where we would need to put it. Dave, can you cite that section? The section again? Cite it. Do you know? Oh, I did cite it. Yeah, I cited it in the regs. It's 310 CMR 310 CMR 10.58 4D 1D. Okay. That's the that's the citation right there. The only um, so our, our only uh, riverfront area impacts towards the calculation. There's th this corner um, is 150 square feet of, of impact within riverfront area, and under the regs, you're afforded uh, 5,000 square feet or 10 percent, whichever is greater. And that's uh, as far as riverfront area impacts are, that's fairly nitrogen. However, in uh, offerings for uh, mitigation for that, what we're proposing to do is where the stream is, the stream is pretty, de the, the, the inland bank up above the stream is fairly degraded uh, as well. And what we're proposing to do is install or, or plant native uh, shrubs to increase species diversity along the banks there and uh, provide additional vegetative cover. So that's the that's our mitigation strategies in, in, in a nutshell. And with that, uh, I, would, I would turn it over to the commission for any questions. Uh, additionally, yeah. we, we had talked about the, the possibility of there's a sewer easement that runs along the top oh, the bank of the, the river. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we were also offering to work uh, with the community to establish um, a walking path along there. Um, and provide some community access easement um, around the periphery of the site to get back there and then that. What, how that, what form that takes is we're, we're um, happy to, to talk about it. If we build a portion of it, if we grant the easement, if we do both, um, whatever it be, uh, I think we just want to work with the community um, to make sure it fits into the overall plan for the area. So we're, we have not yet submitted to CPDC um, this, but we're planning on doing it shortly. It was recommended we start this process first to get to begin to get the impact and then kind of overlap them so that we can share the information. So. It, uh, are you going to be on the December meeting for CBDC? No. So one question that I, and I, I know that uh, someone came to a DRT meeting, uh, the group, the owner, and talked about this, maybe not so anyways. Uh, we haven't we haven't formally been to a DRT. We we did okay, we have well, met with staff. Th this might be uh, needed information. Uh, typically, the fire department requires access around the entire building, as you can see from the uh, the building next to you. No, no. I mean, I, we understand. Did you that. look into that? In, I just in, want to make sure. Right. Okay. In 2016, um, fire department access has always been very difficult to, to grasp from fire department to fire department. In 2016, the state promulgated uh, 527 CMR 1, which takes the fire access recommendations from the NFPA uh, 1141 section 18 and codifies it as regulation. And that now kind of levels the playing field, gives all the fire departments uh, the, the rules mm -hmm. with regards to access. This plan meets 527 CMR 1, and it doesn't require access around the entire building, uh, essentially. Um, we'll, through the process, we will we will meet with the fire department and understand the fire department. I just don't want us to get too far ahead if that becomes something that has to be. I, and I understand what you're, what you're saying, yeah. but it would that's be been great, point great to know that yeah. you brought it up to the chief. Yeah. No, we, and that's, that's part of which we're trying to click yeah. off okay. the biggest, biggest, uh, biggest impactful um, impacts to the to the development as we move forward. We know that what we're asking for from this commission is is uh, is part of that. So it's all part of the process. But we totally appreciate that we don't want to go too far down a road before getting feedback from absolutely everyone. 
So we're uh, happy to answer any questions the commission may have or the neighbors. Okay, any commission, commission members have any questions? Yes. Could you look into uh, along the southern border of that site to do any wet, wet, wetland replication along there? Along which the? You call them? Oh, southern. southern. The, where's, the, oh, where's the north area? Bottom is the west. Yeah. The bottom is the west. So, so this site over here? Correct. That oh, green strip yeah, that's this, there. Um, the light green strip that's all yeah. the way on. Is, the, is this going to say to our property bound here? The, one of the issues with, with if we were to exclude, I, I, I'd be more more, um, I would lean towards replication in this area because by necessity they need to come in here and do their grading anyway. If they need to come out and grade some of this out to bring this down to wetland grade, we're already re planning to restore this area so it, it won't change our planting plan by much. I would just anticipate some additional grading. Yep. Oh, just, you you would had say, talked about up here. You would, you would mention that there wasn't any other place on the site that you had yep. wetland, wetland replication. As right. I look at that, that yeah. it happens to be other areas that right. could be taken into consideration. Yeah. I tend I tend not to propose um, wetland replication areas in areas that are that are otherwise locked by wetlands, in which case you'd have to create disturbance or through wetlands to get to a replication area and then pull out. It's more more apt to look at a location. I was kind of looking more towards Main Street. Yeah. That, that yeah, we did. That I mean, we looks we, like we, a pretty large area there. there. Yep. So. In this area, th this area was previously served with the, the home foundation of the previous house in the that garage. was raised in there, so that's right. part of our plan. But yeah, that's that's an additional opportunity. So I think that we can, we can certainly evaluate that as right. to whether or not to, to include some additional restoration here to, to get to the two to one parking issue. Happy to do that. Uh, less. Okay, get closer. Uh, uh, could you explain a little bit? More the I understand. So your your because the hatched area, the thirty five foot okay, zone. Really what's that going to look like right now? You know, it, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have a retaining wall, basically all the way around the, the parking area. Retain, there. yep, retaining wall here. Yep, um, around the the, the building elements. Yeah. And so this is going to be uh, this is vegetated. You know, you, Get rid of the Norway maples. Yep. It's sloping down towards the wetland, vegetated with. I, I can't remember. You, you talked about what it, what it would so be. The Norway maple and the bittersweet. And the bittersweet. The bittersweet. Yeah. yeah. So in the existing yeah. condition, yeah, it, it, it's an area that's that's heavily degraded. That that's that's welcoming to, to restoration. Yeah. There's this. Um, we have other site plans that show the topography. Yeah. Do you want to pull the replication? If you go to site plans. I think the topography would help a bit. In that area, there's there's uh, a bit of a where the historic disturbance was. You can tell that it was all, uh, you know, buried concrete, riprap, and, and and everything else. So let's see. It's at the. Can you go up just a little bit? Yep, that's EC plan. It's going to be about three or four sheets down. We're looking for the one with the, the title block on the bottom. So that's it. C5, yep, right? you got it. Yep. Okay. We'll bring that in. Yeah. Yep. That's great. So there's, this, there, there's a steep gradient embankment that goes down um, where the 35 foot no disturbs on this, and it, it's very heavily degraded. So our plan is to go in there, remove um, select cut invasive species, Norway maples, Asiatic bittersweet, which will create a void. Um, yeah. This area is also a, a bit devoid of topsoil, so um, because of the stony nature of that disturbance. So our plan is to remove Norway maple, remove Asiatic bittersweet, which will create voids top dress any areas that will we'll look for any areas that have any less than six or eight inches of topsoil will add to, to uh, topsoil clean loam screen loam invasive free over any areas that are devoid of topsoil and then we have uh, a planting schedule to uh, put um, they're basically they're plants that are uh, uh, very accustomed to um, the border of wetlands uh, um, sweet pepper bush uh, High bush blueberry we propose in that area. Okay. And then we have the so seed. Yep. That's this 35 no disturb zone restoration area, approximately 18,000 yep. hard insulation. And you've got the following organic soil, trees and shrubs 30 red maple, 30 box elder, yep. 30 zascal. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, Eastern Shad Bush, Witch Hazel, and Bob Mountain Laurel. And then uh, to stabilize this, we proposed a seed mix application. There's, uh, we were, um, we're, t we're talking about blending two different species. There's uh, conservation wildlife seed mix from New England wetland plants, <coughs> which is a great cover crop. Um, but in order to, first of all, to add both aesthetic value and wildlife value, um, I had proposed to blend uh, some New England uh, uh, native wildflower mix into the conservation seed mix. That it provides native uh, flowers that are beneficial to pollinators, your butterflies, hummingbirds, bees, um, but also has some aesthetic value as well for the residents that, that, that will live here. So that's the proposal for the 35 booster. You know what that big black thing right in the wetlands is? With this thing here? Yeah. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> Is that some Sorry. kind of a, like a chimney or something? What that was it? A structure out there? Good question. Let's see if it's... It's a weird structure. You might go back, wouldn't you? To... It only shows up on that plan. It's not on the EC, so it must be an anomaly in the in the CAD file. There is a, a bench benchmark indication over there, which is a triangle, so it may have been a symbol that went alive. Well, you know no, what? you've got another oh, one uh, right in the middle of the building there. Might be the on this sheet yeah, or on, yeah. the, on the other sheet? Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. The flowers for the I don't know if that, that yeah. lends to what oh, that might be. <laughs> I think those, yeah, those are anomalies. Yeah, there's, there's a second one in the, in the building as okay. well. That's something, if we provide you, I mean, anticipating that we'll provide you a revised uh, plan set um, with, with additional replication. You want a waiver for anomalies? That. What's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. Um, yes. The 35 no disturb zone, the new way maple, is that a pretty uh, extensive canopy? Just, uh, yes, I'd say that, that that is the dominant species that's in, that's in the tree canopy. So, Chuck, are we going to require an analysis of how many trees are being cut down? I, mean, I assume you're cutting them down. Yep. We'd be happy to leave them. I mean, they're invasive, they right? They are. But uh, are you uh, replacing them at one to one? Um, no, because we didn't have a quantity. I, I carried enough um, uh, small shrubs and trees, the box elder, red maple, <laughs> at an off centering distance of, uh, I think it was eight feet, which, um, based on the fact that it's not clear cut, it's select cut, that I felt that that was um, a bit. I went, I went uh, on the conservative side of number of species that would fill the voids um, based more on eight foot off centers if this were to be clear cut. So we're going anyway. to need to know how many trees you're cutting down in the buffer zone? Yep. How many replacement trees and where you don't need any replacement trees and we accept uh, shrubs, two shrubs for each tree. Two, two to one shrubs to trees yeah. is a uh, standard. So okay. if you can meet that, it would be great. If not, then we have to talk about what to do. All right. So, what if, we, what if we don't take, you guys want them out, right? Well, so that's that's the point. I mean, yeah. I, so this is. Do you guys want us to, I mean. This is restoration. We can, right? we can work with them. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, isn't the idea. Oh, I thought you were saying it's not restoration. No, no, it's yeah. restoration. The idea is to get rid of this. And I also think it's, uh, it's, 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 not it's something that uh, they're, uh, the habitat is being enhanced by this planting. I think we should look at maybe that wetland finger up by the front and maybe not ask for that part to be done. Okay, and are we sure they're all only Norway maple and there's nothing else? No, there's some, that are, there's some that are in there that, that we plan on retaining. It's primarily Norway maple, but it's not a monoculture. There are a, a few scattered uh, red maple in there. There's some scattered box elder in there. Um, so it's... The, and you, uh, you will lead those, correct? Yes, yep, yep, yep. That's the slot cut. Is in any native species, we would only identify the Norway maples to, to, to come on. Am I mistaken? The, 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 the tree line is generally, like, there's, there's not a lot going on that you're getting rid of in this area, am I correct? 
There's, I mean, if, if I had to ballpark quantify it, uh, probably 40-some-odd 40, 40 trees. Okay. The one yeah. In that? Okay. Yeah, those trees in there, that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah, there is, yeah. I, I yeah. thought it was only where the finger was. That I mm. Okay. No, it's, it's mostly overstory in there. It's not dense uh, um, overstory. There's no shrub layers. There's really no it's shrub layer, different. right. And that's that's one of the challenges with our made. Yes. A parking lot question. Okay. So I see the proposed grade is about 99. The parking below, not the garage below, but the 13. The 13 auxiliary spots yeah. that are up in this area. So in the, the existing grade is in the 94 ish, 95. So why retain that area? I understand that the finished grade is 103, but is it? 80, 88. Accessibility to the front door. We're actually putting the front door on the back of the building. Right. Okay. So we're raising the parking lot. You get be the able slope to get, you need to get the slope yeah. around this uh, circular uh, walkway. You get up to the 103. Yeah. Up to the one, Yeah. Up to the 103. Sorry. I just, just want to. Just as a comment, and I know this doesn't have to do with conservation, so I, I rarely make a comment like this. <laughs> I wish um, zoning could have taken a, a particular consideration of this property, so, because you know I can see that you're, you took pains to keep the building out of um, the single-family zoning district. You know, single house zoning but it's in this particular example like the zoning that line between multifamily and single family um, is a disadvantage to the placement of this that could help out the wetlands do you know like there that if the zoning wasn't as big an issue on this lot that maybe that apartment could be configured to more properly align with the highland, the upland on this property. Yeah. It is un unfortunate, and, and actually the parcel next door, the zone line jogs back. So it's not consistently yeah. parallel in the same distance. Was that, was that a question or a discussion had with zoning, or no? It, it, there's, there's only two ways around it. One would be a use variance to allow multifamily in the single, which is not allowed. And uh, the second would be a change the zoning, rezone it, which is a trip to town meeting. Yeah, and, and also for the residents who live there, I'm sure they would rather have, you know, their dwelling be a little bit more set back from the road and the parking in the front. It just, it just seems a little bit more reasonable. Um, it's just too bad that that one zoning line you know, means that there's now a taking of a wetland. <laughs> you know, wetlands have to be filled now. And um, it just seems kind of impractical from an overall. No, but we did, do, we explored all uh, possibilities of, of creatively going to uh, using the, the zoning and, and going around it. In fact, we had to go to Zoning Board of Appeals to get a special permit for continuation of the parking in the back um, because that's parking in a single-family residence which which isn't technically allowed but since there was there's existing parking there where the trucks were parked mm -hmm. we have a zoning board to, to do that so, yeah there it is a constraint and maybe not fully considering all of the what's in the best interest of, of all um, but it, another reason we and I came forward early and informally to talk about the site. And I think Chuck had talked about the degraded nature of that wetland that we are impacting because it's right in the backyard of the, of the single family house and there's a fire pit back there and, and so forth. So we're. And, and having that building a little bit more fronted on the street might actually, at some level, protect, might serve as a, a barrier 
to like fly away trash to the wetlands behind the building as well. So well, yeah, I what mean, we're, what we're finding on on these sites is that with the use of the retaining wall is not two twofold. Number one, in the initial construction, it sets this dividing line. So it's not, hey, there's a silt fence down there and we're continuing to walk, but it, when you start that course, which is one of the very first things that needs to be done and you bring that wall up, that's the barrier. That's the new barrier. There might still be silt fence down there, but there's no reason to go on that side of the wall. Um, so there's a protection there. And then long term, it, it serves as a, a very formalized barrier so people aren't traipsing down there. We will have the pedestrian access way, which will go around basin um, at a more slight grade, uh, but the rest of it will be, will have that wall barrier. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I agree with your comment, but ultimately we have, we have and, and, and I, I just, I reiterate what you said, I, I think that's a great point. I mean, uh, I think, yes, we are taking wetlands from the, the front near Main Street, but ultimately what we are also creating is a nice divider, a nice barrier, a nice, you know, I think the current site use, that, that area, you know, it's continuing, you know, they were continuing to kind of cheat back there, in closer and closer to wetlands, and, and, you know, I think from even from this, probably at some point got into it, um, and, and this is going to be a good kind of taking it back, creating a buffer, creating, establishing, um, establishing that, yeah. um, I think if you, you, you park back, you, you're going to, you're going to look back there and say, Oh, that's a, a great area back there now. Whereas you know, right now, I think you might not you might not see that same value. So uh, I think there's, there's a lot of I think there's a lot to be added. With, just like I said, having that building, having that plan. And, you know, it, yes, it comes with losing something in the front, but um, I think the proposing something good. I, I I do. You know, I think I've heard. You know, I would like to see. The two to one replication. You know. Chuck, do you have any more questions? Yeah. I, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about the wetland up towards uh, Main Street or 28. <coughs> so I, I, I wouldn't replicate <coughs> there. That would be my opinion. You wouldn't replicate yeah, there. I, yeah, I mean, they it, can't do it in back. I, it, it, I would prefer. I, I would prefer everything in the back. I, I think yeah. I think the what we've just said is that there's little there's less value to having something up in front by Main Street if we can create as much as we can in the back there. I think that's, and that's great. Restoration area in the 35 foot zone. I think that um, compensates for a lot. Uh, it's done right because that's a mess out there now. Yeah, I think and that's that needs to be, be considered with the uh, wetland that's being taken. I mean, those are my comments, and I, I, you know, I would take the applicant up on the uh, offer of uh, building the trail and kind of doing the easement. I've talked to engineering a lot, and maybe we could bring that forward between meetings, uh, yeah. and then have something that the commission could see. I, I mean, I was intrigued with the, the the trail. You know, I think when when you had originally come, we just kind of discussed and said, "Oh, there's an easement back there. Is there something that could happen?" I don't think it was ever really discussed about get, actually getting it. Up to to the front of the lot, which I, I think is a a great addition. Needed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> needed. <laughs> much because value. ultimately, uh, what, what, what was going to happen with that, it? I mean, that we were we were kind of hoping and wishing there was some it actually said, be yeah. a yeah. connection. What's, connection. What's the purpose of having a landlocked public access trail if there's no yeah. no no continuity? So I, I think that's a, a a great thought of where this could potentially go yeah. or where it could be. So. I think there was a lot of material for the commission. Uh, you know, I didn't expect anything more than a few, you know, no review, some questions, and then, gotcha. and, and then, get the two to one. yeah, so I was, I yep. do, I have, I actually do have one question. Bob or Dave, can you turn off those, that heaters? Because I'm dying over here. Oh, thank you. I would like for you to turn the lights down and throw on some romantic music. Toast, yes. <laughs> He's a heater. We're all be asleep in about three minutes. <laughs> I didn't know there was a heater on. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that, I don't know if the other one's on behind oh, Dave, but uh, all right, this one's on. Oh, I thought it was just me. Uh, no, I, I, I don't want to lose anyone. <laughs> that's uh, that's all I had, but so, I do expect to review the material a little bit more. 
We have a month between now and our next meeting. No, we had a stormwater report. No? We had a stormwater report. Yeah. And so engineering will have to review that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Are there any more comments from the commission? So, just so kind of have a, a quick recap. I, I mean, I think we heard you know, the two to one ratio looking some area. What, I mean, I, I'm completely complete agreeing with that. We need some time to digest this a little bit more, but are there any other like takeaways that they need as we, we need this more information next month to really understand this? Um, the, the tree count? The yeah, the tree count. Uh, I'd like to know about uh, the access around the building. I mean, that would be important to me to understand. I don't hesit hesitate uh, yeah. to move forward uh, without know knowing that. The fire. Yeah, um, the tree counts. And then you know, the, I think the replication. And the other thing that I want you to hold off on is there's a request to uh, waive the fees or reduce the fees. And I want you to hold off on that because I think uh, the engineering department uh, we wanted to have a conversation about. Do we? This is a tight. This what is a would tight be good site. In lieu of the fees. Okay. This is a really tight site. Do you have a staging plan? Did I miss something? Oh, for um, well, this is going to require. This is over an acre, right? Is this going to require NIPTI's uh, SWIP? So that that would be forthcoming uh, with a stormwater prevention plan for. We did carry. We carried standardized best management practices at our notice of intent application for management of topsoil for sediment stone tracking apron at the entrance for <coughs> sediment erosion controls, uh, but it will be subject to uh, the NIPTI's uh, construction general permit, stormwater management, uh, or stormwater pollution prevention plan, um, which, as I'm sure you know, is a living, breathing document during construction to, to maintain that. Um, um, and it's, it's monitored as well. We, we provide an erosion control plan. But to your point, the staging plan is very important from a tight site like this. How are we going to sequence it? Where are we going to start? Where are we going to end? Where are we going to stockpile? I don't normally like to guess that for the, in, in advance of giving the plans to a contractor. In this case, Stonegate Construction is the developer, the builder, and the uh, site contractor. So we can get with them at this stage and start to talk about those issues and what they, how they envision doing this site with, with the tight tight uh, and, and give you some detail on that uh, so that it's part of the decision. Okay. Do I have any comments from questions from the community? And introduce yourself. And sure. My name's Tony Sorosoulos, my wife Carol Ann, and we're a Butters. We're at 29 Shackford Road. So my backyard abuts this property. Okay. And um, my first question is, in comment, and I, and I know it's an expensive piece of property and you have to get your return from the amount of units. Seems like a lot of units, 24 units. So what is the grade of that building currently where that land is and what is the proposed grade when you do the parking? Uh, I can't see it from here. Yeah, the, the current grade is, is around elevation uh, 92. Uh huh. The garage floor will be at 93, mm -hmm. and then the first floor will be at 103. 103. And then there are three levels of uh, units above. Three levels above. And the construction is masonry, is it wood? Wood frame. Wood frame. Okay. That seems like, to me, and I'm not a, a builder, you're putting 10 pounds in a 5-pound bag. And I know that you have to maximize your return on that property. but. You're taking down 40 trees, which I'm not in favor of. There's a, a, an apartment building on Avon, A1 Street right now that's farther from my home than this, and they have lights on the building that when the fall comes, those lights shine into our yard. So I'm very concerned about the lighting. I'm concerned about that parking area out back and how you're going to light that. I'm concerned about the front entrance being on the back of the building because as these cars come around, there's going to be headlights coming into my yard. Okay. Uh, when with the parking in the back, you know, what grade is that? I don't want to be looking up at, at a parking lot of cars. So those are my concerns. It's really, it's the elevation, it's the, uh, the density of the site. And if you scroll down, you can see my house up on the, the back left one. Are you one of the residents across right, the... Yeah, right there, that on the left. 
This that, that one right okay, there. Okay, understood. Yeah. That's our house. Okay. And the and, house next and, door is our son's. Yeah. So we're very concerned about that. And so that's going to have an impact on me as people pull into that site. You're raising the grade. Okay, sir. Um, we have to... I, I understand your concerns, yep. and I, I do feel for you, but we're here for the wetlands. I understand, and but that now all also, your wetlands. Also, going back to you, you did bring up a good point about the, the lighting, mm -hmm. and that can have an effect on the habitat of a wetland. And so there is a, a process where these uh, developments have to, you know, prove that, you know, certain lighting you know, it is shielded, and uh, we had something very similar with with Austin Prep, where you know, they, 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 they it's in numer numerical things, and they can shield it and, and right, right. change the lighting. So, so you're asking for a photometric plan. Well, I think they're going to have to pro provide well, we, that. It, yeah, we we haven't provided a, a photometric plan to to this commission, but we will to CPTC and, and share that with you. Okay. Essentially, what we have to do. Uh, in today's day and age with, with parking lot lighting is light the parking lot but not have that light trespass up which causes light pollution or out be, uh, to the back so they're shielded and to only shine where it is supposed to shine and the other part of that is you don't the, w the way the lighting is, is, is constructed in the housing you don't actually see the the light bulb or the light source. source. Mm -hmm. So you, all that um, will be seen is is the light on the pavement from the person that's in the parking. Lot. So, so it's very very controlled. There's there's a whole other process that we're going to have to go through public. You'll be notified for that with with um, CPDC, and they'll get into issues of headlight glare, proper screening. You know all of those things, but with regard to your point on the number of units, that's dictated by by zoning, the height, the location of the building, mm -hmm. approximate to the street, the number of units that we can do. That's all per. I understand. Zone. I understand. Uh, but the but the grading is an issue to me, the height of the building, and uh, and then as I said, taking down 40 trees is not something I would be in favor of, and if we do take down selected trees, I'd like to make sure it's replaced with mature plantings, not, you know, little two-foot shrubs, okay? And I know we talked about two tonight, two shrubs for every tree taken down. Okay. I don't want a shrub that, I don't have 20 years for that shrub to grow, I understand. okay? Yeah. So. That's, and that is a valid point, and, and again, it, it, it does go back to, um, in, in some feedback from the commission in terms of the cost benefit of taking these normal mavens, in, in the sense that from an ecological context, I only see that these are invasive species which are typically desired to be taken out um, if, had it not been for that allelopathic nature of Norway mapers, I, I would propose to just leave the tree canopy in. They're not that of negative consequence and only do um, restoration in the understory by, by supplementing through, because it's devoid of understory in, in species diversity, of just putting the Understood. species in and still keep the trees. Uh, there's just a uh, concern in the back of my mind that because of that allelopathic uh, nature that the, the shrubs may suffer. But, um, I mean, that's the, the, the cost benefit of whether or not we can maintain tree canopy and still try to get um, some, some native species diversity in the understory through seed mix uh, application. And, um, but wouldn't it be possible, <coughs> instead of taking, and I don't know which trees you're taking down at this point, right. but closer to the buffer zone, plant mature, mature shrubberies now before you take down the, uh, the invasive maple trees behind? Right. One of the challenges there is the, 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 in order to get the tree cutting material, there's the disturbance associated with cutting these trees, and contractors aren't, uh, can't, can't dance around the shrubs as they work their way in to get a tree and, and get out of there with uh, equipment. And it makes um, a practical sense to put the plants in following tree removal. But um, uh, maybe, I, maybe it wasn't clear. Yeah. I'd like oh. to see some mature trees and shrubberies planted before the other trees are taken down and you can phase that so it's, it's so install them prior to to removal of trees that's correct right and that's what I'm saying is it's difficult to get no it's difficult get to the trees to take them out and dance around the, the I, plantings that you've I already I understand before that so I understand your point my point is if one phases that you don't have to do it all in one shot you're going to be in a construction phase correct yep 
Okay. That construction phase, 8, 10, 12 months? No, 12 to 18 months. 12 to 18? Yeah. So during that period, while the site is disturbed, right. I think we can do a phasing plan of shrubberies and plantings. I know it's more difficult and I know it's more costly, but that's what I'd like to say. Right. I don't want to see 40 trees come down and then yeah. hope that the resulting replacement works. We can, we can look at that, but it's not difficult as much as whether it's feasible or not to, 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 to put plants in and then work around native plantings to, to, to take trees after the fact. That's, that's it's difficult. It's a bit out of uh, feasible, infeasible. Well, I, 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 wouldn't say well, I think you just have to leave an access way um, to have that done, but we'll there will more, be more meetings. We'll take one. Thank you. Thanks. What, what is the commission's thoughts on the building? I mean, it's it, there is sort of that trail, and I, I am sort of floundering on the the, the, the taking the trees versus trying to restore uh, understory and, and create uh, species diversity in the understory. They may, ex I mean, if we did, so we, we already proposed to do some uh, topsoil dressing on the top, and it may be the devoid nature of topsoil that's preventing some of this understory from growing. Well, we, we have, Chuck is asking us to count count the trees, the removal trees. So we got to be get back out there. Let's yeah. take a closer look at it. Yeah. Maybe there's an opportunity to, to to selectively remove some of the some of the trees, leave some trees in strategic proximity to your home. Um, and overcome the uh, choking out of the understory by, by taking David, enough of the Norway maples out. Yeah, yeah, yep, I David, agree. I do have a question on the, on the Norway maples sure. and, the, and the toxins. Is that, what, is that what is preventing a shrub layer back there? Or? It may be. I mean, that's um, something, if you see Norway, oftentimes you'll see a Norway maple that's, it, it was an introduced uh, or ornamental plant uh, yeah. used in, in urban landscapes. Um, European species. Sometimes you'll see areas where it's, it's <coughs> or Norway maples are planted over a grass, uh, like a, a lawn, you'll see an isolated Norway maple, and it's just devoid of grass around the tree canopy. And it's not, and a lot of people would just presume, well, it's just because of shading, but it's actually the root structure beneath that's, that's, that's causing some of that. So um, it's, I can certainly delve the, into it. The root structure of the Norway maple tends to be very matty. Yes. And it chokes it chokes out that the, the ability for plants to, to gain roots. I mean, through it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had one in my front lawn, and I couldn't get the lawn to grow. And when I tried to dig it up, it's just you're choking, just hitting refusal everything. Everything out. I, th I think once once we see the tree inventory, it's going to make decisions easier. I think that'll make. <coughs> yeah, that's my my suggestion. Yeah. Be to, we'll to inventory the, the normal yeah. things in there. And, further assess okay. the practicality of, of, of taking those out and whether or not we can um, restore the understory and minimize. Uh, what is the plan from here to go to one of the other boards, CPDC, and the uh, kind of understanding of, uh, you know, shielding of the lights and... Yeah, we're, we're readying an application for CPDC. But before you come back to us. Well, yes, we'll have submitted that and I think we'll have a DRT meeting that and then we okay um, I, I mean I think I think removing the maples has um, value and uh, more uh, uh, habitat the tree yeah, guy said improvement he yeah what well, do you why don't you I, talk about I, it yeah I sure. agree I mean, we consider that even in our line of work that they will choke out and they do not provide a friendly habitat for our trees mature or not in shrubbery I think with the canopy plus those toxins it would provide even quicker you know if these trees aren't branching till 20 <coughs> feet up ahead yeah but you might be more beneficial to have that screen it's gonna be a continuous yeah, screen rather than zero just to 20 up the... feet versus 12 to 50 you know so that's part of my point. Yeah. I, I don't want to hit I want to make sure that there are more mature trees that are being planted yeah. and not shrubs are gonna take uh, or saplings are gonna take twenty five years. So I think you might be missing this point. 
be saying is that the lower story may be more beneficial to you. One of the oh, things you that. mentioned was that you didn't want people coming into the parking lot and they have headlights shining towards right. your house. Well, if you have the lower and lower vegetative understory, that's going to block those those headlights from going towards your house. And, so, and, that's, so, and maybe I wasn't clear because that's why I said I wanted those plantings closer to their building to block out the headlights and that and have that kind of screening. I just think we can do that and not take down all the maples and, and disturb that area as well. I don't, I don't know why I have to do so, it. Yeah, so that headlights not really our issue. We just want to make sure that we don't have any spillover from the light, from the parking light, from the lights that are going to be installed. That could be CPDC, and you can go to that meeting and mm -hmm. discuss the same thing, because they'll put C, uh, trees and shrubs in their decision, uh, mm -hmm. and they'll require those. But for us, we're just going to look at the spillover. The vegetation in your, the back of your yard? Yes. You do? Yeah, yeah we have a lot yes. of woods. So that's not adequate at this point, you feel, to? In the fall. The lights, the way the lighting is at the Avon Street Apartments, yep. it's very annoying. It shines into my bedroom at night. It's, it's very disturbing. I think that's something that's going to be mitigated with this, with this development versus the Avon Street because Avon's been there for many, many years. Understood. So and they just put inexpensive right. floodlights on the building. And I just want to ensure that's not the direction we go here. No. This, for the developments that have come in the town and and what we've seen uh, is many different double checks on that. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Is, uh, uh, you don't mind, where, where is the Avon Street apartment? It's not, next door is Belmont Arms? It's right next door to Perfectos. Yeah. Okay. yeah Perfectos, Perfectos there, right on the corner of Avon no, and no, Main. Well, over here. Right. Okay. Main. Yeah, it's right next to Perfectos. There's a little stream there, yeah. which is yeah. Walkersburg, and then there the next building. No, okay, yeah. I remember it's that from the map. Across from the effect does it? Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Right. And that's probably another couple hundred feet back. Yeah. Right, and that shines. When the leaves, in the winter, in the summertime, with the leaves, they have a the long trees, park we don't see effect. anything. Right. Mm -hmm. It runs right. Right. straight right. towards right. your house, I guess. Mm -hmm. See, we meet, We actually see Main Street when the leaves go down now. We'll actually see Main Street. The cars go by on Main Street. So, uh, so I, I just think if we do it in phases, I would like to see 40 trees removed, but if we can put a, a, a buffer of mature trees on this property, okay, then that will serve to uh, uh, do the screening. I just don't know why you can't do both. But in terms of, uh, w one thing important to mention in terms of screening as well is that our restoration plan for the bank, which is closer in proximity to your house, calls for 80 um, uh, shrubs and trees along this corridor that I think would, I mean, that, that alone would yes. provide more of a buffer zone from your, your visual would, yeah. line that of sight, good. that these will be... Um, I didn't hear those 80 shrubberies. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a good point to make. There's, um, uh, well, th there's two tree species and two shrub species. So this will be red maple and box elder, which at maturity will grow 40, 50 feet in height, which should provide you some cover in here. And then at 12 to 15 feet in height, there's a sweet pepper bush and um, what was the other species I had? Uh, speckled alder. Yeah. Speckled alder is 20, 25 feet in height. And that can be done early and, right. not, and not have that logistical problem of cutting. Right, dancing around grading and right. other right. Uh, elements that of construction. Right, that would be along the... Yeah. the That's, we'd be happy to get those yeah. in. Do I hear a motion? Continue. Uh, we don't have a. No. Uh, I make uh, 259, 267 Main Street. We have 12 lots, 39 and 40 Stonegate construction until December 11th. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, what can I do for you? And I considered that okay. the, yeah, the, the, the root structure based on the rear that okay. would be versus that would compromise the structural integrity of the sewer main located uh, 30 feet away. So that's definitely a good idea.
So I, like, from, from the summer. I wonder if it's REC. I don't know. It's like so he actually might fall off with that. You want to put him in the right direction? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if it's just the right. Right. But also for like energy. So let me go. I'll go do the DRT meeting. You probably get all that back. Probably in the contestants. Oh yeah. Right. Can you check the infrastructure? Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Bye, guys. Yeah, do we have all that, what you just had on that? Yeah, platform? except for the, the rendering is the only thing that I don't think okay. we, we produced that today. I can send you uh, an email with the, the rendering, but you do have the same plan. If you want to, that would be sure. Would yeah. We'll add it on to the sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, agenda Actually, yeah. uh, is an ANRAD 270-07260, Annette Lane, Map 38, Lot 139, Seabold. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, 
based on the Reading bylaw regulations um, and vegetation within the forested wetland is dominated by red maple. Um, the understory is dominated by glossy buckthorn and uh, uh, sweet pepper bush and then high bush blueberry. Um, And uh, the sparse ground cover contains patches of New York fern, uh, <coughs> skunk cabbage, sensitive fern, cinnamon fern, jewelweed, marginal wood fern, and royal fern. And so if you look at the plan, you can see the BBWs demarcated <coughs> in the field by wetland flags 13A to 1A. Um, flags 13A and 1A were added after the fact of our delineation, just to extend the de delineation southerly towards the property boundary. Um, and then you'll also see on the plan, it's hard to see on this, but some of the flag numbers have R's next to them, and those were based off of um, flag changes that were made during the site visit that I think some of you attended with Chuck and uh, my colleague Rich Kirby. And so, I think the flags were moved maybe a foot or so in the field and are shown on the plan as such. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I would love to answer any questions that you might have. What is, I'm sorry, what is the purpose of this right now? I live on 10 that way. Excuse me, uh, wait, excuse me, sir. Um, we get to ask the questions. And then we'll open oh, it I'm up sorry, to you. The way she okay. asked the question, I That's okay. thought it was directed to me because I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking right at it, right? Fair enough. Who the trap? Maybe it's worth explaining what an ANRAD is. Uh, abbreviated Notice of Resource Delineation. And uh, in its delineation of where the uplands are and where the wetlands are, and nothing more than that. Um, it's kind of a good idea if you're going to develop a site to really know where these are so that you can develop. You don't want to go too far down the road and just file a notice of intent to do some work and we don't agree with your wetland line. So that's why a developer would do that before they do any kind of assessment of what they might put on the property. So it's it's a beginning, it's a, and it's a good idea. It's a beginning stage of, of you know, getting approval from us. Do we agree with the wetland line? Do we not? And we were out in the field with the applicant's representative, uh, Rich, Rich Kirby. Kirby. Rich Kirby, and we did have some questions on a few um, um, uh, flags, in which we um, moved um, to our favor. More wetland, uh, less upland. Not much, but yeah. So. Yeah. Ultimately, what I think is always important with an ANRAD to understand is. There's not a project necessarily being proposed at this meeting. What the, the what's before the commission is where are the resource areas? Where is the wetland? Where if there's any other resource areas out in the site? So where are they occurring? And that's that's um, when she was presenting the the flag IDs that they've marked out in the field where was myself, Dave, Becky went out there and we Kathleen. walked. Kathleen, my, my daughter, went and we walked each point um, to, to review. What, what is, did we agree with where the location was? And, and as it was discussed, I think there are three or four points that ended up getting revised. My recollection is not much more than five feet or so. Um, but otherwise, I mean, my perspective from the site visit, I mean, this was a pretty relatively straightforward site just from the, I mean, there's a big grade change. Mm -hmm. um, and the grade change is relatively indicative of where the wetlands were. Um, I don't know, was there anything else left? Uh, your plot was at wetland flag 21? Yes. Yeah. Okay, just looking at that, yeah. Questions from the commission? Yeah. Question that's, uh, this, this line, this dotted line that bisects Across basically two thirds of that lot. Yes. That says portion of existing drainage easement. Yes. 
Uh, I know you had mentioned something about that, Chuck, when we were up there that day that you had to check with engineering, but what does that represent, that dotted line? So that is a little out of my wheelhouse, okay. um, but I believe whoever owns that easement has rights to it to put drainage in, and I'm not sure if I'm speaking to that completely correctly. Um, I can check on that unless anyone else would think. It's most likely going to turn out to be an area that that you can't put a structure on. Really? Yeah. Can you can you uh, can you put pavement on that? though? like a driveway? So all that I don't think um, I don't think they want pavement. They don't they don't really want fences on it. Um, so it's up to the engineering department to prove that so that would be a great spot for lawn um, in the past that's what's happened I think we get a fine right to, I don't know if Peter has an answer Peter Siebold I'm, I'm the owner um, that drainage easement was a proposed drainage easement for a project before I bought it and it just stayed there okay. so the drainage easement goes to the other parcel but it was it was proposed before I, and it just stayed on. Okay. So that's all that was. What right. other parcel? I, I guess I'm uh, to, the, to the, the right. The town of Reading? The town of oh, Reading. This, yeah, this is town owned Reading. by. Yeah. Okay. So, do, so you're saying that <coughs> that dotted line is wrong, or that's the origin of it? It was proposed for a plan years ago, and it never was removed. So it's on our current, well, correct. it's sure on our current map. Yeah. Over. Right. It still it was it was registered as just never. Came Are you going to try to remove it, or I mean, gonna, I'll talk to Jack about that. But mostly, I mean, it was just it was something that was proposed that never happened. So what I'm trying to find out is whether we should be more interested in that corner because that plan reads to me with this drainage easement, it can only be lawn and what's existing. You actually have to stay out of it. So if you're going to try to remove it, then this commission would um, probably scrutinize that area a little bit better. But didn't we? One of the strange things to me when I look at that, that's bisects across the highest level of the, the high ground of the, the whole lot. Yeah. Right. Well, it, again, it, it's not, we're only confirming the BBW boundaries. Right. So if this is an engineering uh, discussion that needs to be had separately. I think that is something uh, we can talk about, but... Um. So Chuck, did you feel like we, the so it's WF14 through, say, 23? Did you feel like we didn't scrutinize that enough? Um... So I think we've got really I, I guess what I'm saying is uh, when a notice intent comes in, we would want to know if this was on the table or not. Yeah. And and through the whole course of the project, not we walked the whole site. Okay. It I, was, I guess it wasn't one spot. My but, point is that the line we're not talking about scrutinizing the line more. I think that the line is well from my perspective I'm so comfortable with there's there's the actually that. something that the commission didn't know about about, about this line, which uh, uh, Okay. I don't know, Becky, did you know? Maybe Becky no. knows. I don't know. No, Were you I on the commission in 2002? Either. Well, apparently, um, which is not in any of the information, that Rich Kirby, back in 2002, the same applicant and the same LEC, did an, did an ANRAD. It was approved in, I don't know, November, my recollection was 26th of 2002, and it looked like my predecessor, Fran, 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 Fran Fink, <laughs> um, did a lot of work with each flag. So I guess my question is, does anyone, is anyone interested in seeing that old plan and what that 2002 Conservation Commission um, approved? No. No. You know why? No, I, I want to ask I'm because I know. Yeah. Can, I, can I answer? Well, wait a minute. Let me finish my question. I'm I'm I, feel like, I feel like I'm at my house talking to my kids. Can <laughs> <laughs> I finish? <laughs> so, so I, anyways, I just wanted to make sure that there is one out there. You guys know about it. 
and if we're looking at new material and this will stand, each application will stand on its own, then that's the decision. And I'm fine with that, but I want you to have all the information out there. Um, we got a call. I'm intrigued. Oh, we got an email from uh, an abutter that wanted to make sure that we understood that there was a hydraulic connection between a net and Applegate, and that 2002 uh, plan or some plan after that. Um, this person had said that um, it was denied, but I couldn't find anything in the electronic files. I don't know if Peter has any information about that, but I just. I, the only thing I found was there was a lot of flag moving and a lot of precise checking on each flag. Um, and then a question which I just thought you could answer best, um, because I don't want to take up all the space, was uh, this person was wondering how we did uh, what he called uh, a wetland delineation during this winter time period, and he was afraid that we couldn't see the plants or the vegetation out there. but. Well, you can. I mean, it wasn't, there are, there it are, there there. are keys yeah. on winter vegetation, and you look at the twigs. However, with Clethra ulnifolia, which is sweet pepper bush, you can see that the, you saw them. The little yeah, so I'm horrible at plants, but they, they you, pointed you the sweet pepper bush out to me, and, and that was very clear. <laughs> yes, and it's one of the dominant <laughs> wetland features. It's not, just, and it's not just the plants. I mean, do you I still... I thought the leaves and the... And the <coughs> Even the even the ferns were still the ferns. Yeah, and it wasn't. We and weren't in in the deep winter when there's you know, you know snow that could obscure what you might see for the herbaceous layer. Like there are three layers: the herbaceous layer, which is you know the ground cover, <coughs> ferns, grasses. Then there's a shrub layer, which is you know, you know, you know six feet tall. And then there are the tree layers, and and you can identify those even in the winter with, you know, the right keys. Right. And then you also use soils, which I think Rich, you know, we, 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 we made him dig a few <coughs> places. Yeah. And I feel very, um, I thought that it was very black and white because of the grade. Um, was the, that was yeah. what I was most surprised at because um, I had heard about this site a couple of times. There have been some meetings about it. And when we got out there, all of a sudden there was this, this was this hill. <laughs> and, um, and you know you can't miss it. It's not. It wasn't as big as the one over at uh, Arcadia, but uh, this certainly you can't mistake this area for you know a hill. Yeah. Um, I'm, vegetation is definitely my weakness, and and uh, I, I thought that that it was very clear. <laughs> uh, so I, I I thought I was very comfortable with the walk in the line and, and where it was located. So, we I'm, I'm, flags. I'm, sorry. So I thought we parsed the flags and the in the, the change in elevation pretty thoroughly when we walked. The <coughs> I was satisfied. I just wanted to cover that base, and I also wanted to ask Peter if it was denied. He was the applicant of record back in 2002, and he, I'm hearing that it was not. There was no denial from the Conservation Commission back. Oh. Okay. It's all. What do you mean, the denial of the ANRAC? Yeah, he said, uh, well, I'm not sure if he mentioned a particular, but it was... Actual permit, yeah. Yeah, some permit was denied, and, and I, I looked into it. I didn't, I didn't find that right away. I did email back saying, I'll look into the paper copies, but, it, 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 but that's why I asked the second question, which was, is this is this permit application going to stand on its own if you, and if you guys have already said yes? So makes, Plus it's also it three makes years me old. not have to look at it. More than three years old. Right. That's fine with me. I just, like I said, I was still in high school. <laughs> That's, those are my only concerns about what's going on here. Um, do we have any other questions from the community? I can back then was... Uh, Vernal pools. That was an issue. Yes. At the, and when you mentioned the thing about the flags, because we went to a meeting, whoever their engineers figured the flags were, uh, people felt that they were on, wrong. But vernal pools, I thought, was a major part of that problem. The, and the document that I found said, uh, from Fran Fink, said in 2002, there are no vernal pools on this site. 
Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so the it was, and I think that that's what Rich Kirby and LEC is saying. Yeah. And, and that's what was the same in 2002. Well, I thought peepers were in a vernal pool. There are peepers and there are tree frogs. Mm -hmm. I hear them and they, I, the tree frogs come into my backyard. And then another concern I have is if you get three inches of rain, are you concerned about any flood? Because that whole back looks like a lake. It so this really retains a lot of water until it gets absorbed. So we saw no evidence of vernal pools. Mm -hmm. And uh, past data and the current data says that there aren't any, and it's not on any GIS layer natural heritage. Um, and there's your second question about flooding, this is a two-pot process. When there's actual structures proposed and grading and, and drive, that's when, um, that's when uh, we'll look at the flooding and if there's any. But uh, it's been said before that no no one should have any increase of water coming onto their property. It should be it remain the same or be reduced. So that's what has to happen with this property. And they'll prove it through uh, the engineering numbers and the stormwater report. And if the commission felt confused or overwhelmed, they could always do third party review. I think what's important to note too with that, that second piece of it is it, you know, if they did come before the commission with the structure, that is a completely separate application. Mm -hmm. They would have to notify everybody over again. Yeah. Uh, it would, the process starts essentially scratch. They would have a, a, a line that the, the commission has looked at and approved, but that yeah. we haven't looked at any structure. And, and just, just to add to that, uh, just get it on the record, I did ask uh, Rich Kirby about proving that this is a buildable lot before the commission gave a decision. That doesn't mean we won't accept a notice of intent, but before we close, We'd like to know that the zoning and the planning board understand how there's going to get access to the site, and the, and so we can look at that too during our open meeting. That would be on the next one. It would, and that would be part of the next one. So yes, there's so this, they don't this, know how they there's get no access. there's no grade changes or anything here. We're only looking at flags that were tied to oh, okay. plants. And that was there. just my question: is what was the difference in this ANRAD? I mean, how much did it change? the delineation of the wetlands. It sounds like not much at all. So I didn't compare the two. Okay. Um, and, but th my, my expectation was this commission, you know, has been together a long time and they're going to judge it on their own accord, not going back to 2002. Okay. And that's what I heard. One last question, and this may be the wrong place for it, but if the owner's here, I'd like to mention it. The previous owner, when he couldn't build, put up a you know, fence around both sides, on our side and on Applegate's side. Since then, trees have knocked it over. It looks hideous. You know, there's a fence there with big trees have knocked it over. There's, tr there's a fence hanging in my yard mm -hmm. from it. If the owner could make that more presentable, it doesn't look good in Reading to have a tree at the end of a road. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you um, identified yourself. What? Uh, my name is... Uh, Robert Judge, I live at Tenonet Lane. And he's okay. Cool. We, we went, I think, through the fence. No. Yeah, yeah. Are <laughs> no. you right here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look good. And see, the one in my yard, because I own part of the easement in mine, it's hanging down. And I keep on trying to think of how can I, and I don't know how to put a pole in there. I'd love to see that fixed. It doesn't look, it doesn't look good. And then when you're looking at it, to go look at the end of a road, nice town like Reading to see this chain link fence with this big tree that's knocked it over and that's that's how you got through it too probably but I just I just want to throw that chair, up. One minute. I just want to throw that Real, up. Fence company, yeah. I know a fence guy. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I just want to mention that because it is a nice work. <laughs> It's it's it, it would probably have been something. It's a that strong we, fence, other than where. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. probably put in well. Uh, I would I would just let you know that we don't um, we want to see that um, when fences go in, they allow animal passage. So a portion of this site would be developed if that happens, if that's approved. Yeah. But the fence probably couldn't remain in the other section because oh. of that. Uh, it has to allow animal passage. If they have the fence there, I don't mind just just fix, fix it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I think you've opened up a can of worms with the fence, but but it might it might come down. Yeah, it might come down. Yeah. 
Okay, well then I don't mind if we come start. Okay, yeah, it just it's just one of the things we always ask and uh, on the other side, we don't. So unless someone has something else to say. Maybe Dave does, I don't know. No. It's not going up, we know that. <laughs> any any other comments or questions from the community? Hearing none. I move for issue of the week. Issue an order. Your name? Gary Chapor and I live on 30 Applegate. Yep. And I just want to know what's the process for the rest of the where this is gonna go from here. So we kinda of have a feel for the process. So we don't know they can wait two years and three quarters before they submit a, a plan, but this is only valid for three years. And so then, I'm, just, I'm just here and I'm just, I'm sorry. And then, but what we would expect is something to come in sooner rather than later. I mean, the, even if, so even a couple years out, the commission may just ask for this review to happen again. So it, it's, you know, now that we got the view, they can do their design and they can go and tell everyone else, hey, now we know where it's wet, where it's dry, we can do our jurisdictional setbacks, and we can place our houses and our roads and whatnot, and that's what they need to take to the next group of um, departments. If, if a new application comes in for a notice of intent to the Conservation Commission with a project, a notification will go out to all the abut butters the same way it did on this this application. That's true. Quick question, Chuck. Um, can you get an extension on an NRED or ORED? So I, so it's three I don't years. know it's why you would have to do that, but it, I well, think it would. Well, you weren't ready to, to file. Oh, okay. That's a question. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll look okay. for some town that's extended in ORAD. <laughs> Okay, I just, you asked for, but you asked for the process. But I don't know, I think it just, it just says that they're, they're ready to, you know, their planning process is more defined because they need to know if this is, you know, where, where things are going, so, I, I don't know. Right. We'll ask the chair at that point. Uh, okay. I'd ask Jack to get that training. <coughs> okay. If it's a certified drawing, yeah. he's a PE. That shouldn't be there if it doesn't belong there. Well, it's, I, also I, on, it's also on the, the engineering department has, and we have it on our GIS. Yeah, I don't think it has it just really has anything to do with our, our no. map for this. Yeah. <coughs> All right, do I hear a motion? Make a motion to close. Second. Didn't that, that happen? We already did that, didn't we? No, we yeah, didn't. No, we, we, we had another okay. question. All right. All those in favor? All right. Make a motion to issue. Second. All those in favor? Okay. So. And I'm in favor. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. That's a good, that's a good This Hancock report, they did the over eight inch hundred year store. Yeah. So one of the things that we should do is there's probably a list. Everybody here probably has a list that we could probably open up our regulations and make some changes. But you know, requesting them to you know, submit plans to a, sta a storm standard that's not part of our regulations is just a request. <laughs> I, know, it, I know, but it's but one of those. Of course, she just wants to say it. Which I think. But, but first of all, I think when we put it into our regulations. But this is this is the difference between you know, I, do I want to turn Thank you. You're a smart design into a standard? Yeah. Where it should already just be the, the practice. It's the same as your zoning comment. Like, you, you know what? How would if, you do if, that? 
if Sparta has prevailed, we would just, we would just, we just do it right. now. So put it on the, put it on the agenda. And not, and not based on some stat discussion. I'm a little, yeah, it was frustrating to see that because I just saw that. I was thinking low impact, they could just rotate. Okay, all new business. What are the conditions? Trend Gregory Lane. Yes, that's what everybody wants to know. You want to do that as your last act? What? Ted Gregory? Okay. Excuse me. Can you guys go inside? Oh, and, uh, sorry. We're going to continue our meeting. Stick around, you'll be part of the committee. Yeah, uh -oh. yeah we're not. Team members, we're going to have to Yeah. Thank you. Way to draw in. Way to draw in. Way to draw in. Look at you. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Uh, what are conditions? Ten Gregory Lane. It's on the agenda. Huh. Sing. What? What was the email? We got an email. It's on the TV too. Uh, is this? Do you have that ready? Excuse me? Ten, ten Gregory Lane. Ten Gregory Lane. Oh. Oh. All right, ten Gregory Lane. What is this? So, ten Gregory Lane is the, I can go to it. This is the place where those trees were cut. This, yeah? is, this is 10 Gregory Lane, and we closed and issued at the last meeting. It's uh, the the owner and applicant is proposing con to construct a paver patio in the rear yard within 100 feet of the bordering vegetated wetland. Okay, I remember and this. there's actually more work going on. So the applicant is proposing to construct a paver patio, install a five foot high fence and remove four trees in the rear of the yard. The applicant is also proposing to donate um, towards the, the shade tree fund to um, compensate for the trees that they're, they're removing. This was a project that Jack Sullivan presented at our last meeting. It shows a two foot wide, two foot deep crushed stone trench a paver patio and a sunken area just outside the basement door with a drain that discharges out to the 25 foot area. We asked them to put a little bit of a riprap right there uh, to just stop that velocity from eroding any of that area. Uh, I was requested to provide a order of conditions for this meeting, which I have. And this is all that's holding up the order of conditions? Yes. I believe, so you got the, um, I believe the only thing is that we need to sign it, but if you want to make a motion to issue it, then that would be. I'll make a motion to issue. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? What's a sucking area? Excuse me? There's a sucking area? Another half hour to annoy you with my There's a trench drain in, a, in the lower, so the, the area around the exterior door is sunk in. Oh, sunk. I'm sorry. Sunk in. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not serious. I thought you said a sucking area. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> okay, that's sunk. I can't sunk. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. My ears. My ears. Yeah. Yeah. Probably heard that. They get old. They don't, they don't hear so well. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I thought you said sucking area. What the hell's that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to burn asleep when I hear that. Yes. Glad you. We've. Glad we were able to get that answer for you because I wouldn't want you to wait. 
lose any sleep by right? Yeah, I just get that call <laughs> in an hour or two. Jeez, I think I hear one. Chuck, Chuck, I gotta get the answer to this, man. I've been trying to just stop thinking about it. I think my eye is twitching. Today. I need to know. Okay, determination of applicability to dash two, two, Zachary, three, Zachary Lane. Three, Zachary Lane. <laughs> you look like he's going to Am I just so speaking much. a foreign language here? Yes. <laughs> I assume I won't have well, the are. opportunity to right. harass me. No, that's yeah, right. I, 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 much I longer. I'm thinking. thinking. Yeah. 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 He's getting all his licks at me yeah. before you leave. He's, but he doesn't know is he's driving you faster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From three, <laughs> three Zachary Lane was an interesting uh, request for determination. Bill Manuel presented this. He had gone out and evaluated the site. We had discussed it at our last meeting, second meeting of... Uh, October, and oh, man. what this was, uh, I guess we're delisting, yep. is that what it is? Yeah. Delisting mm -hmm. a wetland. And there's delisting? A, yeah, where there's been a little small corner of Three Zachary Lane that has always haunted every homeowner that has owned that property. And we have, um, we have checked off. Uh, negative determination, checking off negative one, uh, as I was directed to. This area described in the request is not an area subject to protection under the Act, the buffer zone, or the Reading Wetlands Protection Bylaw. So I think we, we issued last time. Closed and issued, but you can have a vote to issue again just to make sure someone wants to make that I vote. Hear a motion to issue. Motion to issue uh, determination of applicability 2019 13 3 Zachary Lane, map 51, lot 114, Newman. Do I have a second? Newman. Second. All those in favor? Right. So, so 26 mile post, <laughs> um, we went to the site and there was some things that we have to work through. I have to read the order of conditions again and get back to the owner. Uh, he thought that there was permission given to mow that lower area. And um, so the pool is on the 25 foot line. The lower area, in my opinion, was supposed to be the zone of natural vegetation and un, uh, you know, unmaintained and let it go back wild. The mowing, in my opinion, was said to allow the plants to get a chance not to be bound up by the weeds and whatnot that would come out of it. So mow around each one of those plants. So anyways, I'm going to meet um, Jesse, Mr. Uh, Jesse out there, and um, just go over the, and we'll, we'll figure it out. There was also a trampoline down Jesse, there, yeah. and uh, there was no other spot on the lawn for the trampoline course because the pool took up that trampoline area and um, he said it was a temporary impact at, at best. So these are things we're going to work through. Uh, I gotta believe somewhere there must be some unless trampoline. Unless I can get some direction for the commission about the trampoline. I don't, I don't know. I don't disagree. The area below the pool. I see the Not that this is germane to this, but I gotta believe there's a, there's a some kind of regulation code statute that says a trampoline's got to be like 30 feet away from a pool <laughs> just to prevent kids from doing the obvious. Well, this luckily, I mean, for this is down, sense, but it's it, not always that would have, have, have to be that to be a great jumper because it's way yeah. down, yeah, it's way and down. it's also oh. angled oh. into the yeah. well, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't even flat. It was yeah. it was no, like doing its the, best to try to get a flat area. I couldn't but. put the trampoline where the pool is. I just I'm just imagining somebody put a trampoline beside their pool and kids jumping into the pool from it. You have to be no, Mary Lou Retton to get from this trampoline oh. to the okay. pool. All right. So check for the pool to the tree line. That area in the 25 existing is you know, rubbery and grass. And grass. Grass. And so so the, we had a planting plan, and it, you know, each, everything is on that plan. It needs to, I need to bring it back out to the site and make sure the quantity's in. And, you know, it was, 
it was it was a mitigation for the work in the 25 oh, foot area so not to leave that to, to to be up to the 25 foot area as part of his um, uh, variance request. And I, my recollection was it was going to go back to wild. Now it's going to be an unusual part of his property, not to not walk through, but you know structures or whatnot, and mowing couldn't could no longer happen. And that's that was my, and I'm I'm getting a yes from Mrs. Scanlon. So that was her recollection too. So we'll, we'll I'll, you know we'll have the answers before the next meeting or so at the next meeting. Then make a motion to continue that then. I, no motions needed. It's okay. in the, yeah, it's just old new business. And a certificate of compliance for 16 Bolton Street. Excuse me. 16 Bolton Street. Silver. 16 Bolton Street certificate of compliance. Hello, your agenda. Silver. Can we do an activation? You do these agendas, right, Chuck? Yeah. Oh, 16. <laughs> That's the same question. Bolton. I think we couldn't gain I got it. recruits from the, from the TV. Like Found it. But I think I got to turn the heat back up. <laughs> it was so hot in here. I know, I think I tried. I, I said to her, I was like, Am I the only one? You guys must have been dying. I was like, Oh my god. It, it sounds from here like that noise is uh, the heat or something. It must be churning. It feels up. better already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is definitely airflow, but I'm not sure if it's a ventilation. Yeah. Negative duct or not blowing. It's not blowing anything in here, that's for sure. Brief rundown. 16 Bolton Street did a project back in 2009, and they needed a certificate. They asked for a certificate of compliance. We went out there with, I know Becky was there. No, it wasn't Dave. It was Anika. You were there? No, I wasn't there. You and your kid? Which, which one was the bolt You weren't there, were you, Chuck? I was there. <laughs> Mike and I looked at I thought there were three. Right? There were two cars. <laughs> I was there. That's the, yeah, no, is that the one that has that really strange, all of a sudden there's this the huge mask. drainage. <laughs> yeah. the yeah. Like underneath the driveway, there's, yeah. there's like, you would think oh, it would I be a small one. cover. Right. That that was, you and like Kathleen. Yeah, that was me and Kathleen. Yeah. That was a very interesting one. Yeah, so... That backyard next door is... That's something. So the culvert stops at the edge of, of this person's property, and that's what we ought to do. We ought to show up in sight with ski masks. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> so, would know who was there. Ten were not there. <laughs> Can you imagine those poor people? Wow. Oh, I know. Like, oh, George. What, what have you been up to, George? We got some funny guys in the right. People in the area. The recruitment chair in, in college for a semester. You know, like Renovation of existing house, addition to the rear of the house, including a garage, porch, leading to the into the addition, an extension of the driveway to reach the new garage, a new front staircase, and sidewalk. And yeah, so when you when we walk back there. There's remember the garage, that so that's all addition. Where she, she, she came out like a side door. Mm -hmm. That was probably where the house used to end. That was probably all the addition. Was for that. I mean, this that, that drainage shells as weird as it gets. This is as straightforward. <coughs> so they're saying the stream is intermittent, so it does have the jurisdictional setbacks of a BBW. So anything in the 35 feet. Um, so that. Arc and you know how you have that parallel line with the edge of the uh, culvert. That's only for uh, an actual perennial stream. This arc would be for, or anything on this guy's property would be for an intermittent stream or BBW. So anything 35 feet. So we went to the property and all, and in, in our opinion, 2009 is 2019. Ten years later. 
was the commission satisfied with this? I, I, I make a recommendation that we issue the certificate of compliance. Second. All those in favor? I'll make a motion for the recommendation. <laughs> You're going to make a recommendation? <laughs> So just to, there's minutes and there's uh, two things I wanted to ask about. We already took your plan more. Uh, so there's going to be a forest cutting plan coming in from uh, the town forest that we're going to have to approve. Uh, is typi this? Typically with a forest cutting plan, if there is no work within the resource area, we approve the plan without, a, without any kind of uh, application. I don't know if that's your recollection. If the commission wanted to, we could do a RDA um, or a minor project permit. This is a town uh, entity, so they wouldn't be paying fees. Uh, but there's that notification process, which I'm not sure anyone would be notified in the center of the town forest. But uh, and it's it's not the edges because they're different parcels. So I, I wanted to ask where you thought this was going. You're of course. You're going to get a forest cutting plan, and of course, you need to review it. But under those conditions, if it, unless they were uh, to access the property, had to go through a wetland or create a bridge and that wasn't temporary, then we would just accept the plan. Isn't that part of the probably the, the covenants that? under which the town forest was formed, that they have the right to, to cut? I don't know about that, but if they're working within a wetland, it's our jurisdiction. It's overlapping jurisdiction. This, this is But the forest cutting plan, yeah. which has to happen, is submitted to DCR. Is that part of the forest management thing we heard somebody bring up here a long yeah. time ago? Yeah. So th this is that whole like farming yeah. thing. And this is the next step, forest the, cutting plan. When are they going to do this? I mean, there was There's a whole bunch of trees in there that they want to cut down, but they—it's been decided that they're—they're they're not. They have zero value. <laughs> the, well, the trees have zero value. Yeah. So I just well, saw in the town meeting that they—they have—they have a, a twenty-five thousand dollar line item for doing the, the selective cutting in the town forest. So not only do they—they they, and you have no value in any of the trees or any of the stumpage that's being cut. We have to pay them to do it. How much are they going to pay them? I mean, so the, the amount, dollars the amount that they showed us sure. was, was like sure. a hundred thousand dollar tree for. operation. Right. So there, that, that was more than twenty five. Hey, you were with us on that. No, no, we have to pay them. Huh? I know. I'm saying. Well, well, we're I'm gonna saying go one day that to we cut everything that they were talking about cutting now. But well, there's a value to the stumpage. We do out another day. And oh, yeah. it just it just only happened like a couple of during this summer. Oh, okay. A little bit nice time to go. So yeah, so you know, obviously you get this if the tree is. Not rotted, dead, right. or you know, has woodpecker holes or something like that. You can, you can cut it and sell yeah. it. Right. The ones around the campfire, those are just gone. Yeah. Most no, of the other ones. Are, so they, they actually went out there and evaluated each tree, yeah. and that's what they need to do. And then they're going to put this plan together. There may be a couple, but I don't think it's going to pay for the process. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I was out there, I thought that the trees they picked out were pretty bad and it would give an opportunity for that, you know, shrub layer and the undergrowth to grow up. Is is there any other time that you know there would be some sort of public meeting associated with this? Well you're gonna have a public meeting to talk about the forest cutting plan. Well, I thought we were just saying we would just accept it. At a public meeting. Oh, okay. You're gonna. That is gonna be your application. You're gonna have to review it. You're gonna have to talk about it. You're gonna have to, and I just wanted you to decide beforehand if there's. And that's typically what. So, if, so if they're coming to us, well, why we, and they're not gonna pay fees anyways. And well, we just make it an RDA so that butters get notified. Duly noted. Is that what everyone wants? I would like to also make it conditional that they do it in the winter time when the ground is frozen least impact on the on the uh, on the story and the I'm wetlands. not sure we can we, if they're not so in the buffer zone if 
So we could say that if they were going to go through the resource area, but as my reading of the regulations is that if they have a force cutting plan and it lays out whatever they're going to do, whatever time they're going to do it, we're okay. Only in the resource area would we request that it would be in the winter time. Let's read it. It may, since we're coming up on winter, yeah. it may be the time they're going to do it. I'm not sure. There were several areas that we walked through that the forester pointed out that they wanted to thin out and cut. How many trees is it? $25,000 yeah. is not cutting out yeah. a lot no. of those areas. No. And it, uh, they also didn't well, specify how they were going to do it either, what they were going to use for... Uh, are, they, are they removing them? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to skid loader them out. Any of the terms are. <laughs> well, you don't want a skid loader. I mean, you, they make a mess of property. There's a road, right? I mean, there's there with next to a road. Uh, we were out there. There was a there was a low point where water was going over the road. But there's an established road out there. Sorry, well, there's, yeah, well, obviously there's several throughout the forest, but I just I can't. I, I, I'm I'm not sure if they're using the kind of skid loader I'm thinking of. It's like an articulating four-wheel drive thing that it, it, it'll it climb over anything. It'll yeah. drag any tree, any size, through any any bush to get to where you want it to go. Just really destroys. I'm assuming they do this all over the place. So I'm, I'm you know, sure these are loggers do. that are coming in to do it. i got to believe those trees are moving up some value, though. So the Town Forest Committee uh, will be here uh, at the next meeting. And... So if you have any questions, you can ask. I'm not sure if the uh, anyone else, forester, or tree, I will be here. But any other questions? Becky, you had something. Else? You will be or you oh. won't be. You so say you will be here. I'm not sure he will be. He, he's down. He's from the Cape. So what okay, does that mean? I forester. Mean, the forester. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I assume this is under Mike, right? Mike Annabeth. He? No. No. Oh, he's, he's parks. It's the forest. And, it's the forest. Oh, parks and forest, huh? It's the forest. Well, he's been to all the meetings, and he'll he weighed in on it. I'm not sure that. Isn't he the tree warden too? He is. He is. Yep. Parks, forest, and tree warden, right? Tree warden. I don't know. Parks. Yeah. Yeah, the forest. Well, I I deal with because of what we've done down Sturgis and other places that we're trying to. Yeah, the cemetery th stuff, I think, used to be part of that job. is no longer. So it is the parks and the forest, forestry. He's part of the forestry. Yeah. So, all right. So they'll be here. Yeah, I, I would expect that. I got a couple emails, but um, the, the tree guy, I can't think of his name. What, what, are they, what is the term for that guy that was out there? Forest? Arborist? Lumberjack. <laughs> All good, but that, um, those aren't ringing Paul. a bell. Paul, like in Bunyan. Yeah, Paul Bunyan. He is, he's mailing the forest cutting plan. There's no E in front of his mailing. I was surprised, but. Um, There's no E in front of his mailing? Email. So he's, he said it's going in the mail today. There's an, there's an S in front of it. He said he's going. It's going in the mail today. <laughs> Snail mail. I was waiting for someone. It's not. I was just CC'd on it. I was. I was waiting for someone. Oh, went down to Staples or something. He lives down the Cape. Yes. Well, oh, they yeah. don't have internet yet. <laughs> That's a that canal. I mean, you try to get that internet shit over that canal. It's tough. <laughs> Meeting minutes. <laughs> 1023, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? All right. Make a motion to uh, adjourn. No, no. We got, some, uh, we got some other stuff. Sorry, Dave. But <laughs> I need to know availability for people for our meetings in January and February. And Becky, do you want to update us on anything? But. Becky. My closing is December 10th. Sold. Yeah. Well, not sold until. Closed. Under agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So. December 10th. 
Yeah. Hey, extend that two more days, won't you? I, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you, I, you never know. It may happen. No. So our Conscom is December 13th? 11th or 11th? 11th. The 8th, the 22nd in January. And the 12th and the 26th in February. What's it? The 8th? 8th and 8th and 26th. 22nd. 8th and 22nd? Hold on a second, let me check again. 8th and the 22nd, sorry. And then February 12th and 26th. So the charter for the town, for the boards, says that it's the total allowed members. So we have seven that's allowed for the Conservation Commission. The charter says you need a quorum of all seven. All, you need a quorum of seven. It's not who's on the commission. So going forward, we're going to need four people here, all four who have had to be at every single meeting of the notice of intent, and we need a unanimous vote of, of at least four. And if Dave goes out for his surgery, which he is going to be talking about? I don't think so. You just said it was, you said it was January what? 8th? Well, I need the January 8th, the 22nd, the 12th, and it takes the next three meetings. Uh, January 22nd, I'm going to say probably not. No, Dave. What about the 12th and the 26th of uh, February? Oh, probably. So, what does this? You have to be at all four meetings before you can. You have to, well, you have to hear the uh, presentation. So, or to vote on. Didn't, it. didn't, didn't you, wasn't there a thing that you could miss one, miss one and sign a document? Okay, but only one. Only one. So the point. And I and I was supposed to check on that if it's. A, allowed here. I don't, I haven't heard anyone say that. For all notices that. of intent? I know you can call in too and listen if anyone wants to. So did we break the rules uh, on the last meeting or is it two meetings ago when we had a three to one vote or something? Well, we have to wait through a new statute of limitation now that you've asked on TV. But no, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think that sometimes it Things slip by. But it's. Um, but this is all about who's available for the eighth. Is it, you know, Carl? How's your how's your schedule for the next meetings? You think you can be here? Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get relief at the end of February. I think that that's when we're going to, you know, people may come in and say they want to be on the commission and go through the process that the select board has to put together. So I'm hoping within the next two months. Mike, has, what's your schedule? Right now it's open. It's open. So we have two. Anika? Yeah, I can make them. Yeah. Dave's out for only one. Sounds great so I, far. I mean, the 22nd? Oh. I don't want to come in here on pain medication. That's the only oh. thing. That's oh, come on. I you had a ski no way. <laughs> So we, don't, we don't want you here on no. paid medication. To be sad, it might be anything. entertaining. Yes, I'm thinking. <laughs> oh she might, she might actually, call actually, in. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in, in the 12th, I would say by the 12th of February. If you can't, we need okay. like a lot of notice. If you're going to come in here on the it's going to be chaos. Really it's really annoying. Even though we might have five. Yeah. Okay. Expecting the four. Can right. um, Have we made the, the next year's official... So, you didn't ask to put me together a right calendar, right? and I did not put together a calendar. But okay. if, so it's all those holiday dates that I can't check. Right yeah, now. yeah. But that, that's we, nice. but we will. I'll, I'll put it together and send it out to everyone. So I think the first week in March, I am traveling that week. Chuck. Yeah. You didn't ask me. First meeting. Your availability. I'm. I'm. He's asking everyone. Well, but yeah, but you asked everybody but me. No, I, I think I, he asked everyone. I'm kidding. No, Bob. Actually, I'll be here. Bob? Uh, how's that? Bob. So, and here's something even more I'll important. Leave, I'll, I'm going to make a declarative statement. I'll be here for all four. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so when you... 
And you're waiting Don't for the flock the... of the other shoe, I can tell. <laughs> He's making no, no I'm just, so, uh, just a question. I'm just looking ahead. April 8th is the second Wednesday of the month. That's Passover. Is that going to be something that's... We're not going to have a meeting on Passover? Just a question. I know that that's happened before at some other uh, committees. So... This used to be PNG. I'm not, that be? Uh, I didn't no. take any college courses on which days are like, supposed to be <laughs> here or not. But I, but you generally, what I do is do my best at it, yeah. and then we run it through. Like okay. it gets right. everyone takes a look at it. We have pretty much definitely what when we're supposed to meet. Not by the time this thing gets to you. I was I was just looking ahead, and, and it's uh, it people eat this is, is uh, Passover. Oh yeah. Just it was seven. First time I was on seven. And I mean, it's and it's there's a there's a holiday that we have to take off, and then there's you know the commission can also say that's a day I'm not going to be here. Right. And nobody here is affected by that, right? Right. I'm just I'm just saying that. Yeah. But it's. Uh, yeah. Can, can, can you oh, he ask Bob here. if he's going to be here for the any of these? Right. Yeah, Bob, you're going to be here for the meeting? One, two, three, oh, yeah, you're right. Would have been December. Exactly. December? Yeah. I should be, yeah. Okay. What? I didn't know he was. I mean, look, I, it's one meeting. I mean, I'll, you know. No, of course. Why don't you think I wouldn't be here? <laughs> <laughs> you guys kill me. No, you kill us. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That was a truly laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Just look at me. Just, just. Look at me. <laughs> so, Chuck. So, <laughs> you think by March we could potentially have some new members? Well, it's it's like a wish I have, yeah. and I have no well, control over. I was saying, it's, are it's you like, just wishing that to do be? Do I know? Anything? No, I don't. Okay. Why well, do you? Why do you, think you're why do you but I'm just suspect. reading the tea leaves. It's it's town meeting time, so they couldn't yeah. they couldn't start it on around. this going up to town meeting or during town meeting. And I think weren't you kind of after Christmas? No, you just braved first, me. So I first, but no, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What about the Someone guy who was did. on the trails committee? Who's out <laughs> there at Emmelet? Who's out at Emmelet? Yeah, he was interested in being on the commission. Millet. Yeah, the one you were working on the bridge. Oh, that's right, but we couldn't talk about that, though. <laughs> he was cleaning out the, the river? Secret, right? No, not him. <laughs> <laughs> there, was young, there was a young guy out Was he carrying a shovel? I'm not sure <laughs> no. about that guy. You know who I'm was, talking about? Was he... She's actually really talking about something. I'm just making a joke. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Oh, this was the guy. I know. <laughs> a second. All those in favor. Oh, so Tim can start the cameras. <laughs>